scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. So we considered a few things um, why so many people are poor in the last um, discussion that we had. We said how that they have not decided to be wealthy they do not have a goal to be wealthy, a clear goal, lack of understanding the real formula for wealth and abundance, and then most importantly, lack of the mental transition. And I think the media department did justice on that, reminding us all through the week. Never forget this, that the biggest difference between the rich and the poor is not the money in their pocket. The money in your pocket is a receipt for having a healthy mindset or otherwise. This money, the Naira, is only a physical expression. Praise the Lord. Just a physical expression. Finance, can I have some money? Help me so that some people will wake up now. There are some of you who will never understand this teaching until you see real money. Just any amount, just something to hold. And then we considered the myths and the mindsets that keep people poor i taught us how that there are mentalities there are there are sayings there are cliches that have been accepted in our society that keep people poor number one is that i'm just doing a quick recap number one is that money and abundance is carnal evil or unnecessary praise the lord there have been this illusion this this teaching okay thank you very much there have been this teaching this illusion that money and abundance is carnal. Please don't let anyone fool you. Money is very important. Say it. One more time. If you ever trivialize the importance of money in your life, you will pay for it dearly. By the grace of God, I love you too much to lie to you and to spiritualize out the importance of money finance is very important to the quality of your life to your assignment and to the advancement of the kingdom say one more time money is very important the bible never says money is the root of evil it says the love of money and the word there is eros lost for money the kind of ungodly passion to seek money that will take you to hell that's what the bible says is evil it never said money is the root of all evil hallelujah meet number two if god really wants me rich he will make me rich another wrong mindset so many people justify their poverty as being the will of god and sadly many of our elder ones our lovely parents lovely fathers and mothers most of them, their generation grew with that illusion of the exclusive sovereignty of God. The meaning of that is God is sovereign. He does whatever he wants. Human beings have no contribution to the outcome of their destiny. So we have agreed and most of our parents transferred that mindset to us. Praise the Lord. Wrong mindset. If God really wants me rich, he will make me rich. If God wants you to bath, he will bath you. If God wants you to go to school, he will take you to school. No, no, no. 
we, we have common sense in every other area except finances. When you are hungry, God does not open the fridge for you. He grants you life and energy and you take advantage of that energy and you go and open your fridge and feed yourself. Right? Understand this. At every point in your Christian journey, there will always be a role you have to play in determining the outcome of your destiny. Bishop Oyedeko said, every Christianity that makes God absolutely responsible for the outcome of your life is an irresponsible Christianity. There will always be a part to play if you be willing and obedient. If there is good in the land, but if you are willing and obedient. Hallelujah. So that's the second myth. Myth number three, which has brought a lot of deception to the body of Christ, is that tithing is the one and only key to abundance. How many sincere preachers, godly preachers, lovely, wonderful, God-fearing preachers have misled millions of people in Nigeria into the illusion that the moment you are tithing, that is the one and only thing you need to do and everything will change automatically. I am telling you this by the word of the Lord. That's not an accurate teaching. It's a sincere teaching, but it's not true. If that were true, I guarantee you that 90% of the Christians around who have been faithful titers would have had their status change radically. Is that true? Tithing is the law of open heavens. It opens your heavens so that everything you do under that open heavens prospers. But that's not the only key. He said, I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Not the key. Keys. Meaning tithing and giving as powerful as they are. They are the keys that release the treasures from the realm of the spirit. But we must sustain the technology and the formula to make it manifest here and now in our life. Say amen. Myth number four. That's the one you find around so many people in our society today. And I believe some of us were shocked. I, I remember one person talking to me. I think over last week or so and he said he was surprised when I mentioned this if I can just have a business idea and capital I will be rich it's a lie tell your neighbor it's not true turn to your neighbor and say it's not true many of us think the reason <laughs> see many people still laughing they are still reminiscing on the seriousness of what I said it's as serious as what I'm saying now all I need is 20,000 and I have that um, small shop or I have my fura or yogurt, my stand or I have whatever it is. So many people believe that this is all they need. Give me this plus the business idea I have and I am rich. I can, I can bet you with my life. I can bet you with my life that you will not be rich that way. You will enjoy money for a few weeks or months or highest a year and crash back to where you were. I have tried this too many times with people. Too many times. Businessman, sit down quietly this night and listen. There are so many people moving around. I'm a businessman. I'm a businessman. What do you really need? Capital. Oh God, it's not capital. No, sir. No, sir. I prove you wrong a thousand times. It's not capital. I'm not daft. I know what I'm saying. It's not capital. Because your physical environment will always be a reflection of your mindset. Give a poor man money. How many who want to be a millionaire have you had in Nigeria that got the one million and were able to still remain millionaires after one year? Have you not heard of people who won lotteries? Ten million dollars. One million dollars. Hundred thousand dollars. They laugh about it. How many people have won cars and from Gulda, uh, Maltina, Indomie, they stand on your television screen and they snap them with the money few months later their mindset has eaten everything in their physical reality 
because until the adjustment takes place here nothing you do physically will supplement for a wrong mindset are we blessed so the biggest difference between the rich and the poor is their mindset the biggest difference this is a receipt if I buy this um, this gadget they will give me a receipt the receipt is a sign that I have bought it not a sign that I will buy it it's a sign that I bought it look at me this that I'm holding if it comes into your life it's only a receipt it's not the reason why you are rich it's the proof that you are rich are you getting me now physical cash coming into your hands is not the reason why you are rich this is the receipt that you are rich is God speaking to us so if this has not come into your life then it is a sign that you are not rich you see that the rich are not those who have this they necessarily had to have it because they are rich praise the Lord so we discuss that very quickly and then number five the myth we considered was entitlement mentality remember the feeling that someone is responsible for your success and prosperity I said it was many of us are angry with our parents we are angry with our bosses in office we are angry with our uncles and aunties angry with the rich people in our family because we think that they are supposed to bless us because they are rich and we are offended we are bitter against them and their loved ones it's an entitlement mentality it's one of the greatest killers of wealth potentials in africa so the moment you become rich everybody in your family is leeching onto you hoping that you will meet their needs there are some people even angry cursing you it will never be well with you you saw my rent expire and you didn't come to pay it entitlement mentality that mentality that transfers the responsibility of your financial destiny to someone else to pay the price for you and then you receive the result i told us last week that how many poor people go to meet rich people for help sir my rent has expired how much is the rent Two hundred and fifty thousand, or three hundred thousand or five hundred thousand or whatever it is and then the rich man counts the money and gives the poor man and he never sits down to say uncle by the way i'm tired of coming to beg you is there something you will do to teach me they will never say that what will they say thank you and they will go back and carry their stumbling block of poverty and return after one year asking the same thing again they will come back and find out that within that one year the uncle has built another house they knock the house and they say your uncle does not live here again we are his tenants and you go back to his house his status has changed a thousand times and nothing has changed in the life of the same person praise the lord is god helping us so that very wrong mentality and then we, we started we stopped at how to be wealthy i was teaching us directly straight to the point without ambiguity how do you become rich number one you must decide to be wealthy i told us that many people do not decide to be wealthy they hate poverty they wish to be prosperous but they never decide to be wealthy the difference between a wish and a decision is that the difference between a wish and a decision is that a wish a wish is just a desire just a general desire over something a wish is a general desire are you getting my point now but a decision is a strong desire Thank you. a strong desire that is backed up by the willingness to pay the price and take responsibility. The responsibility that will produce that outcome. Are you getting the point now? 
so many people have not decided to be rich they hate poverty they are angry about it they admire wealthy people they wish they sit down and keep their dreaming but they have not decided say i decide to be rich say i decide to be wealthy no 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 it's not carnal say it from with every sense of spirituality and seriousness i decide to be rich hallelujah it's not enough to say i hate poverty how many people have said it the more they say it, the closer it comes to them because that's not the key to exiting it out decision decision time does not change things time only reveals the true state of things only decisions change things so if your level financially and that of your loved ones is going to change don't wait for time one day go better is an illusion it is your decision that will change it. Say amen. So decide to be wealthy. And you must make your decision a goal. What is a goal? A goal is a desire that you have set as a project. You are ready to channel all your energy and your time to achieving it. Very important. If you do not set goals, you don't set a financial goal to be wealthy, you will never be rich. You will dream about it. You will see yourself in a dream rich. You will see yourself driving cars in a dream. You will see yourself building houses. It will never happen in your lifetime. It will stop in the realm of dreams there. How many people have dreamt of so many things? They get up in the morning laughing and happy. What happened? They say, my life must change. What happened? I had a dream. In the dream, I saw myself counting dollars. I saw myself counting pounds. In the dream, I saw myself building a house for my father. It will remain as a dream until you set it as a goal a goal enough to pursue it hallelujah and then the second the second key on how to be wealthy is that there is an exact formula for wealth and abundance i jumped that and that's what we're going to discuss today and then number three under how to be wealthy i taught us the mental transitions that bring wealth remember i told us that People are categorized into three. Please listen, follow very closely everywhere inside and outside. I told us there are three kinds of people. Remember? As far as the distribution of wealth and mindset is concerned. Number one are people who have poverty mentality or poor mindset and naturally their poor physical reality. So their mindset and their physical realities are the same. Are we following please? Are you getting me? So, here we have um, person A. His mindset is poor. His physical reality is poor. Number two, we have someone who has transited mentally. So, he has a wealthy mentality, but his physical reality is still poor. Are we there? And then number three, the wealthy place now. We have someone whose mentality is the wealth mentality and his physical environment has now become his mindset and i told us that every one of us can find our financial positions in these three illustrations most of us really most of us have poor physical realities by poor i don't mean you are begging for food but there is that state of perpetual insufficiency where people think about money they worry about money look at pastors every service is money 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 you can settle the issue of finance and face more important issues finance is not the most important issue so it's better to handle it once and then you can do some other things very important so here we have the guy who has a poor mentality and his physical environment he thinks the reason why he's poor is because he was born from a, a poor family that may have some elements of truth but that may not be the reason why he's currently poor give this person money something in his mindset will reduce him back please are you following my example say amen and then when he begins to transit mentally right we'll discuss that now this guy begins to get the mindset of the rich and all of a sudden this environment starts pushing him away something in this environment starts pushing him because his mindset is changing now at this point level two he has the mindset of the rich 
but his physical condition is still of the poor and i told you this is the most frustrating level in a man's life because when you talk to a rich man he's impressed with your mindset but then your physical reality is still like a poor man so it's like you are in between the wealthy place and the place of poverty but if you continue and you do what i'm about to show you shortly you will move inevitably no power in existence i tell you will stop you from stepping into the wealthy place there is a place called the wealthy place thou has caused men to ride over our heads we walk through water and through fire but thou broughtest us into a wealthy place hallelujah so let's start off tonight's teaching thank you jesus i'll start tonight By examining the mindset of the rich versus the mindset of the poor. Write it very quickly. If you like, you can create a column into two. You can write one rich, the other one poor. Let's see how the rich think. Let's go into their minds and see how wealthy people think. Since we have established the fact that the prosperity of any man is not just from the physical money that comes. But the quality of his mental transition there is a way that the wealthy think there is a way that the rich think that brings financial resources to them and there is a way that the poor think are you ready now so we're going to be contrasting and most of us are going to be seeing ourselves we'll be seeing the mindsets that we have had that we have preserved that have been responsible for the poverty in our lives and the goal is that as i teach you begin to switch switch in your mind the moment you see yourself in that category of the poor, you must begin to have a determination to change. Praise the Lord. You make all things new, yes. You make all things new and I will follow you forward. That's what it's doing in our minds right now. You all things new yes you make all things new and i will follow you forward the first difference between the rich and the poor is that the rich believe in taking responsibility for the outcome of their lives while the poor believe in luck and chance so write it under the category of the rich right that the rich believe in taking responsibility for the outcome of their lives they believe that they have a role to play in their wealth and financial abundance every wealthy man justly wealthy not crooks not corrupt people everyone justly wealthy especially in the kingdom they believe that they, there is a participation from their own end to determine the outcome of their lives if they are to get into the wealthy place they believe that they believe in taking responsibility over their financial destiny still the same point while the poor believe in luck and chance are you seeing i'm contrasting the mindsets now the poor believe in luck they believe in chance they believe in modern nature they hope that one day something will change they love that saying, We are poor because God wants it that way. Right? They are the ones who teach, Oh God, give them so that through them we will get. It's a devilish mentality. Don't ever use that kind of word again. You are cursing yourself and cursing your destiny. You disqualify yourself from receiving the blessings of the kingdom. Say amen. So mindset number one, the rich believe in taking responsibility. Say after me, in the name of Jesus, I take responsibility for the outcome of my finances. In the name of Jesus, I take responsibility for my financial destiny. Say in the name of Jesus, I stop blaming parents. I stop blaming friends. I stop blaming circumstances. I take full responsibility for the outcome of my financial destiny. The moment you get to that point, you are beginning to be like the rich. 
my brother did not give me the hundred thousand otherwise i would have bought more goods and then my shop would have expanded you are a liar that's not the reason leave your brother alone and leave him in peace he may have done you bad but that's not the reason the poor love passing responsibility. They love it when they say no, it's because of government. No, that's not the reason. The flaw of government revealed a flaw in you that had been there. See that? Number two. The rich are very disciplined and patient people. Underline the word discipline and patience. The rich are very disciplined and patient people. While the poor are very indisciplined and very impatient. Financially speaking and generally speaking. The poor are so careless. Careless over their financial resources. They are not disciplined. Most people think the rich are the ones who do get rich quick things. No, no. The poor are the ones who always want sharp, sharp money. They always want all kinds of things. Every wealthy man understands the place of discipline and patience. Hallelujah. It's a wealthy man that will be worth 10 million naira and he will still be taking bike because he's trying to build his wealth. A wealthy man will be 10 million naira worth yet he's staying in one small room because he's building. A poor man, if he gets 100 or 1 million naira, he will rent a house of 600,000, buy a suit of 100,000 and die with the remaining 400,000. Very impatient people. And there is a pressure, listen, especially for us, the young people, there is so much pressure in our generation to prove that you are making it. Right? The moment someone graduates, everybody is saying, so how far, how far, how far, what is happening? And then we try to look for all kinds of ways. You kill yourself and buy a suit of 100,000 and that's all your savings home and abroad. You buy a watch of 25,000, buy a shoe of 30,000 and where you stand, the people you are talking to are so poor, they don't even know the difference between a watch of 2,000 and a watch of 25,000. So the effort to impress them has been wasted. Hallelujah. The rich are very disciplined people. Very disciplined. They don't waste money. Go to the restaurant and see the way the poor eat. You will be shocked. You will think they just won a lottery. Madam, eat there? Yes. And you say, bring it. And they, they eat carelessly and foolishly and they spend all the money. When their friends come in, guy, how far now? I sit down, sit down. Don't worry, don't worry. I will arrange things for you. This is a poor man. Look at what he's doing. It's, that one is not just giving. It's called financial carelessness. Are we learning something? And then he finds out that money is running away from him perpetually. Number three. The rich and wealthy believe in the law of process. They believe in the law of process. They know that it takes time to build wealth. Wealth, true wealth and prosperity is a function of time. The rich believe in the law of process. The poor always want results without process. That's why they get into all kinds of things. That's why they are deceived and swindled around. They get into all kinds of things because they are poor from the mind not from their business from the mind the poor like processes with they like results without process so you meet somebody around the park and the person calls you right like we have many in our in our society we've had so many stories of those people they call you around they act as though they are strangers or they send you an email you have just won two million us dollars or 10 million and you are not even afraid to read the mail you open it and smile and they write there they say don't tell anybody and you keep quiet you call your friend and say ah it's miracle service the prayer is it's not miracle service you are about to get into trouble how many people have been swindled of 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 their hard-earned money 
because of getting into schemings. Let me tell you, anything that does not subscribe to the law of process, run away from it. Breakthrough comes instantly, but preparation from that, for that breakthrough takes time. It is the manifestation that is instant, not the preparation. In one day, you can become a millionaire, but after a season of preparation, are you getting the point now? You don't prepare one day. No, sir. No, sir. It took Joseph one day to become a prime minister, but it took him 12 years to prepare for that position. It took Moses one day to exit uh, the people out, just one plague overnight, but it took him 40 years at the backside of the mountain. Hallelujah. It took Jesus three days, only three days to fulfill his assignment. He died, was buried, resurrected in three days. The plan of salvation was over. But it took him about 30 years to prepare. So the rich, where are we? The rich believe in the law of process. And the poor jump process. Right? They jump a lot of process. They want result. Sharp, sharp. Someone just comes with a phone and say, guy, buy this phone now and you will sell it. You didn't ask him where he got the money. The person who is trying to sell the phone to you is looking like an arm robber. And most likely he is. And you are there because you want it sharp, sharp. May the Lord deliver us from this sharp, sharp mentality in the name of Jesus Christ. Never be under pressure to prove to people that I want to make it sharp sharp. You want to start a shop in one day. And you want to have 100 customers in one day. You want to start a restaurant in one day. And you want to be the leading. That's what has led men of God to witchcraft. They start a church and in one year, they want 5,000 members. In one year, the man wants protocol. In one year, he wants to go on air. In one year, he wants to have the best of sound. The best of church activity. So he will have to go and, and bow down. To some godless things how many people are in occult today many of our parents have joined fraternities and occult because they want sharp sharp money they join all kinds of clubs and societies that don't make sense they initiate them into godless things the rich and the wealthy the truly rich and the wealthy they know that it takes time it takes time it takes time. Warren Buffett, one of the, well, the world's wealthiest man. I think he should be in his 70s or 80s right now. A billionaire. Over 70 billion dollars worth or thereabout. He started, he knew what I'm teaching you now. As early as age 8. But it took him at least 4 or 5 decades. Are you seeing that? The path to wealth can be accelerated but not rushed. You can accelerate it. God is the God of speed not rush. He gives men speed but he does not rush men. Tarry in Jerusalem. As desperate as I want the gospel of the kingdom to reach the earth. Tarry in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power. Say I receive grace. To follow the due process that brings lasting wealth. Say it one more time. I receive the grace to follow the due process. Hallelujah. Number four now. The rich always plan and set goals. The rich always plan and set goals. While the poor are always impulsive and reactive always impulsive the rich always plan if they want to build they settle down like the bible says they count the cost how much will it take us to build okay it will take seven million how much do we have now two hundred thousand it's nothing compared to what we want what can two hundred thousand do right now two hundred thousand can buy at least we can buy four bags of cement and a few sharp sand. Come and pour it. Intimidate the devil with it. Put the cement there and pour the sand and go back home. You are taking a step. They plan. 
but the, the, the poor, they behave, they can go out in one day. I've said it again, many of our parents do that. In one day, they go back and come up with things they don't plan for. This is how the poor, let a poor man enter a boutique. He just planned to go and get shoe. And his budget was 7,000. But he enters a boutique and the blue light is there. Everything is shining. And they say they just brought this. I mean, they just came from Italy. This is from Dubai. This is from Turkey. This is original. Touch it, feel it. And he's looking. Carelessness is about to happen right away. Because he's about to be erratic. He's under pressure. Say about a guy, you don't pass this level now. And he say, oh yeah, how much, how much? He say, oh yeah, because of you. Bring 13K. He's paying. The, remain, the 100,000 he took there was for something. But because there's no planning, he ended up buying something that was not, you bought a cloth that was not your size. You knew it was not your size, but they convinced you so much. The blue light made you to see it and you bought it. And you went home, you are angry with yourself, everybody, your friend. How about you're a bad friend, you didn't advise me. Whereas you were there bragging, feeling like a rich man. A wealthy man is not embarrassed. To tell you no this is not this is this is beyond my budget for now i will plan and i can come back there is nothing embarrassing say how about guy you you that you are staying in a 20 million naira house it tells you that's not the issue i work based on budget that's how the rich think poor people are always under pressure they just give you pocket money or you get your salary of of 30,000 and you are going and your plan is to go quietly to a restaurant where 500 naira can feed you somebody comes to push you to a restaurant that is bigger than your level and then you go there and while you are buying food you find some other people and they say ah your salary is there we will die with you here until you buy this and you end up spending half of your money have you seen that happen to our parents they collect salary and over the weekend the money is finished they think it's because the money is small the man was saying that when he was a primary staff, at a managerial level, weekend is still finishing his money because of that mindset. Always plan and set goals. Always plan and set goals. Don't be impulsive. Don't just do things because you have to do them. It's okay if you need to do them at that point and the reasons are justified. Otherwise, do not be embarrassed at all. Don't get into that pressure of pushing yourself to the wall. Set goals. Set goals. If you don't need a car, don't buy it. If you need only three trousers, walk with three trousers. There's no reason having hundred trousers with nothing in your pocket. You flaunt trousers around and they look as if there's something in it. And there's Why not invest in your mind? Praise the Lord. I've told us again and again in this place. Stop trying to look rich. Pay the price and be rich. There's nothing honorable about trying to look rich. Pay the price and be rich. You can see a wealthy man, especially here in the north. You can see somebody who is a multi-millionaire. And he can just wear his jalabia and wear his palms and just be smiling. No pressure. He can even enter a golf to the bank. Whereas the poor man collected loan of 7 million, bought a car of 5 million, rented an apartment of 2 million and will spend the rest of his life paying that debt. And the poor man just enters. There's nothing and he just enters. How are you? You see him using a simple phone. Whereas somebody, you ask the person, how much is in, in your, your account? 500 naira. How much phone are you using? 130 iPhone. What? Six. You just bought it. It just came out and you bought it. Nobody to communicate to because you don't have any, any collection of rich, sensible people. Who are you sending a mail to? How is the mail going to increase your worth? Hallelujah. Say, I refuse to be under pressure. I set goals and I work with goals. Hallelujah. Number five, the rich see challenges as opportunities and stepping stones. Oh, how powerful. The rich see challenges as opportunities and stepping stones, while the poor see challenges as stumbling blocks 
and obstacles. Very powerful psychological difference between the rich and the poor. The rich, every time they see challenges, number one, they never call them problems. Rich men never say problem. They say challenges. Hallelujah. And they see challenges as a stepping stone. They see challenges as an opportunity to learn more. They see challenges as an opportunity to grow more. But poor people, Let a poor man start a business and it crashes. And you hear him regretting. It's you oh, that told me, I've, I've always hated poultry. I hate chickens. I hate poultry. They can die anyhow. And the, the rich man says, no, my own. I lost beds three times. Three sets. I lost 5,000 beds in one day. And the poor, I, I, I can't take that. And they remain poor. Because they are unwilling to step out of their comfort zone. The rich see challenges as opportunities look up please for a while how have you interpreted the challenges that have come in your life especially financial challenges hallelujah what is your interpretation of challenges do you see them as an opportunity to learn more to know more to access greater light or do you see them as stumbling blocks there are many people today many people today they refuse to go and get jobs because one time they got a job and they fired everybody in the company and they have seen that challenge as an obstacle and they want to avoid that embarrassment whereas somebody who was poor kept applying kept applying and now the person is working in an oil company say after me from today i see challenges as an opportunity to learn, to improve, and to grow. I change my attitude. I change my response towards challenges. Very powerful. Two people can go through the same thing. The experience will make one wiser and better and wealthier. Another, it will become the reason why he will never move forward. Hallelujah. You ask your parents, for instance, why have you not set up something now? They say, look, let me tell you, you are a small boy, that's why. In 1970, is it two or three? I can't remember exactly. I think we did something like that. And then your mother will concur. Yes, we did something like that. What did we even do? We started producing ice and nobody bought it. The ice will freeze there. They will take light. It will melt again. It will freeze there and the business packed up. And because of that, because of that, they have seen that challenge as an obstacle. They've seen it as a stumbling block. Hallelujah. Say, I refuse to see challenges as obstacles. When others are seeing obstacles, I see opportunities. Please say it. When others are seeing obstacles, I see opportunity. Your attitude towards challenges is what will determine whether that challenge will kill you or you will rise above it two people can have a carryover two people can have carryovers for one he just looks and says so this is how my life will end so i'm truly dull that thing they said is not a lie i'm seeing the proof right in front of me whereas somebody looks and says there's no problem this is a challenge I will come back and I will give it to life. Because of this thing, I will establish a university in the future. I'm on my way coming. I may cry right now, but I see it as an opportunity to rise. Whereas for somebody, he looks and says, if you like, call me a dollar, you are right. Are you getting what I'm saying? Two people will be um, intimidated and and, and affected by armed robbers armed robbers will come into a street and rob every house is that good? no but I'm saying they rob the house they seize jewelries seize everything two years after that robbery one family has renovated their house where they broke the glass they have improved on it the armed robbery gave them an opportunity to renovate the house have you seen people like that? the door that they broke they now brought security doors Whereas one neighbor is still angry using banana leaves to cover the place where they did the stealing and still angry. You see him tie it and say, everybody that comes to the house, they come. 
this is where this idiot came and stole our money. Two years afterwards, he has seen that as an obstacle. Are you getting what I'm saying now? He has refused to move forward. Whereas one has used the opportunity to renovate his house. Your attitude towards challenges will determine whether you will use them as ladders or they will become a load that will destroy you. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I change my attitude towards challenges. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I change my attitude towards challenges. Someone was fired. Two people were fired. For one, it became the beginning of the tragedy of his life. Ten years after being fired, he became a miserable man. Turned into a miserable husband. Turned into a miserable father. And, and, and the list goes on and on. For someone, the moment they fired him, he said, no, the owner of this company does not have two heads. I will make up my mind. And in three years, he's already employing 100 people. Attitude. I know so many people who were fired and they went back to their boss after two or three years. They said, thank you for firing me. It was the best thing that happened to me. The giant in me was sleeping. That, that, that firing letter did something to me. I got interested in the issue of finances. When they wanted to lock us in the prison where we could not pay the sound. Right? Sometimes... <laughs> challenges can be a gift brothers and sisters it will shake you the day the landlord says come out and he's packing your clothes out and you're saying oh god don't embarrass me i will go but just wait in the night i will run and give you your key and he says no way this morning here and now carry your pregnant wife and your twins and go out of my house and you are now you are embarrassed and you are moving with your wife pregnant and twins and people are saying look at irresponsible men how can this man the twins and then the woman is still pregnant sometimes it will take you to the cave of adulam like david and that's where you begin to sit down and say look something is wrong i'm getting something wrong challenges really bring us to the place of destiny they create defining moments in our lives but your attitude towards challenges will determine whether you will stay there or not hallelujah is God speaking to us so the rich see challenges as opportunities and stepping stones while the poor see challenges as stumbling blocks and obstacles number six are you getting blessed the rich have great courage and persistence the rich have great courage and persistence whereas the poor easily give up poor people easily give up they start a business it does not work they quit they start building a house it does not work they quit but the rich they are courageous people when one door closes they force another one to open when one strategy fails they start another one wealthy people are highly courageous people they are persistent very persistent hallelujah you can see somebody who is rich five years after he told you in the name of jesus i'm coming out of poverty nothing has changed in his life but you come and meet him and his goal is still intact you laugh at him and say bros why are you fooling yourself just just agree that it's not your turn to shine and the person will tell you i'm still reading the book five years from the time he made that decision he's still studying the books he's still growing he doesn't have a car yet but he's still growing he's still staying in the old house but he's still growing you knew him with that one trouser five years later on he's still wearing it but he's still growing that's a rich man his status will most certainly change what have you given up on god gave you the direction god gave you the grace but he never told you the road will be easy preachers lied to you that if you are anointed it will be a bed of roses preachers lied to you that if god is with you it will just be a walkover preachers lied to you that if you are anointed you will start a business and it will be flawless because the holy spirit is at work in your life that is a lie from the pit of hell failure is a prerequisite in the school of success you have nothing to tell me if you have not failed in life you have not earned the right to counsel me if you do not have a track record of failure 
what you see today as your failure will become your symbol of wealth it will become the throne that you will sit upon rich people have failed you cannot imagine you cannot imagine how many times they will start 10 businesses all of them will fail they will do a lot of things it will not work but persistence and courage when everybody is criticizing them they are busy working when everybody is saying why must you keep doing this eh? someone tries to ask two ladies out you ask the first one say sorry i'm already engaged you ask the second one say no 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 god has already revealed my husband to me you are not the one after two opportunities you will never ask a lady again to get married to because you sit down and say kai me i, I can't i'm not a fool i can't be taking embarrassments like this. you will marry you oh, let me tell you in advance if you don't take the courage to continue ladies shout continue every door cannot be closed no sir one door will most certainly open hallelujah very important are you a courageous person are you persistent over your goals or do you just give up easily i refuse to give up in the name of jesus you're a pastor here you you started a walk and it looks like nothing is happening and you are truly called but you are about to give up you're a businessman about to give up you are a family man about to give up refuse to give up and i tell you at the other side of your pain is celebration like a woman right when she goes in to deliver there are times she may want to give up and the midwives and the nurses are encouraging her and telling her don't worry don't worry say is it like that for every woman no it's only me they say it's like that just just give up don't, don't give up for instance and then they continue motivating her and finally the baby is out sometimes she may need to go through cs as painful as it is the baby still comes the bible says do not be weary in well doing he said for we will reap in due season if you faint not but if you faint you will not reap say i refuse to faint let me give us two more and then we'll move to the formula for wealth hallelujah ready number seven the rich are great risk takers while the poor are always afraid to take risks wealthy people are great risk takers they step out of their comfort zone and they walk on water if i perish i perish if i fail i will learn from it if i succeed let god be praised poor people are the easy goers hey be careful oh eh? you want to buy a golf and start a transport business somebody said you know the way nigeria is they will go and hijack your car somewhere have you not seen people minding their business and armed robbers entered and carried the car from the garage and went with it the rich are great risk takers not foolish risk takers but great risk takers in 2010 when we were having the kingdom wealth summit i taught them that the spelling of faith in the world of finance is r i s k spell it r i s k when you are spelling faith in the finance world that's how it is spelled you must take risks You must take risks not foolish risks but you must take risks it's a risk to marry it's a risk to be single it's a risk to start a building project it's a risk to get a job don't you know it's a risk to transport yourself from here to sabo every day for work is that not true you can have an accident something can happen god forbid but a crisis can break out something can happen that can affect you is it not a risk but it's a risk worth taking. When you tell somebody you want to marry him, is it not a risk? You are willing to submit to a man whose ideologies you are not exactly, you are not 100% sure of. You don't know what he can become. Yet you are willing to do that. It's a risk. Life is a risk. Not taking a risk is a bigger risk. You must take risks. This ministry is a risk nobody gave us a guarantee 
that crowds will be inside and outside. Faith is spelled R-I-S-K. When the people were setting up the sound in the morning, none of you signed an agreement that by 5 o'clock you will be here. None of you signed an agreement, but it took courage. We had to step out, haven't prayed, haven't fasted. We have believed God and we are taking a risk. Miracle service is a risk. You don't know who is coming with whatever sickness. People can bring the dead. People can bring anybody, but you, you are willing to take that risk. Are you willing to take risks? Or you are part of the easy people? When I was in secondary school, there was a barbing saloon called Easy Does It. You do that for life, you will fail. Oh, just, just take it easy. Don't, don't do this. Customers didn't come today. Close your shop. It's a sign that God is not with you. Who told you it's a sign that God is not with you? It's a sign that you are growing. It's only a witch as a baby who will just get up. Imagine that a woman gives birth to a child and he just stands up. Mommy, where is the food? That's a, that's a wizard. That's, that's an illegitimate child. That's, that's, a, that's a, a breed between angels and men. That's not a pure human being. And Jesus grew. Everybody say it. Jesus, your king of kings, he grew in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and with men. If Jesus grew, you must grow. Hallelujah. Lastly, number eight. The difference between the rich and the poor. The rich have a positive mental attitude. Please write, write, write it down as fast as you can. The rich have a positive mental attitude. Please pay attention to what I'm telling you. Because after this, I'm about to teach you what I call the grand formula for wealth and abundance. I give you a guarantee. I give you a guarantee that anyone that diligently follows this, even the dullest of us, if you follow what I'm giving you, you will be rich. And rich does not mean buy a car, buy a house. That's survival. The rich, write it down please, have a positive mental attitude towards the opinion of others. The rich have a positive mental attitude towards the opinion of others and never let opinions kill their dreams. The rich have a positive mental attitude towards the opinion of others and never let opinions kill their dreams while the poor are easily influenced. The poor have a poor esteem of themselves. The poor have a poor esteem of themselves and are easily influenced away from their dreams by the opinion of others. The poor, they fundamentally have a poor esteem of themselves. And so, when people begin to talk about them, they are easily influenced away from their dreams by the opinion of others. So many of us are here right now. So many of us are here. The opinions of people is what has stopped you from being rich. What would they say? What if I fail? Will they laugh at me? The other time, they saw me frying a kara and the news spread around Samaru. So what? So what about it? Have you forgotten that if you remain persistent, those who laugh at you will laugh with you? That the reason why they are laughing at you is because they are secretly intimidated by your persistence. Criticism is simply an opinion harshly expressed. It's an opinion. There are people today, Joshua Selman is to them a great man of God that they love. There are people today, Joshua Selman is a devil and a fake man of God. There are people, Joshua Selman is whatever they want to call. I learned by experience. To ignore the opinion of others and to move forward. If you follow what people say about your life, they will kill you and ask others to come and see your dead body. Whether you do well, they will talk about you. Whether you do bad, they will talk about you. They are still talking about Jesus and we are still talking about Satan. Everybody in between will be talked about. 
so deliver yourself tonight in the name of Jesus Christ from the influence of the opinion of others they are spreading rumors around that I like money is it true no mind your business say see I heard that you are the one that said I'm, I'm not I'm not what the, look let me tell you trying to defend yourself is the quickest way of trying of, of giving people an impression like what they are saying is true they now start using wise sayings like there's no smoke without fire there can be smoke without fire ask those who smoke cigarettes status is changing there's no more decline I'm on my way to better days sing it one more time status is changing it's no more decline I'm on my way to better days I'm on my way I'm on my way Better days, better days, better days. I'm on my way, on my way, I'm on my way to better days. Let them keep talking while you produce the results. Anybody can say what he wants to say about you. Please, brothers and sisters, hear me. Don't starve yourself of sleep because of what you think people are saying can I tell you something no matter what people say about you the world is full of troubles very soon they will forget about your issue another issue will come and supersede your issue so you can as well let the sleeping dog lie are you getting what I'm saying now if a lady runs here right now and says this baby is Joshua Selman's baby I've told people I will only ask one question online how did you get pregnant online are you getting me not that i'll sit down and say hey, hey i need to gather a committee now my reputation is at stake i'm a dead man already let the one who sent me defend him if he's comfortable with it fine and good ah i i will never stab myself sleep because he said i called you i called you you didn't pick that's how all men of god are that's your opinion am i like that no so i go to bed learn to frustrate useless opinions in your life ah mama this and that is a wicked woman every time we come to fresh water the way she looks at us are you wicked no so mind your business but you start running around the whole new extension telling everybody how about you man you know am i wicked is it not me that gave your child school fees no 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 save yourself all that nonsense rich people have a healthy mental attitude don't think they will not talk about you just like you have spoken about others let me assure you your turn is coming when you see someone gossiping and talking just pity him and nod your head because his own is coming good measure pressed down shaken together yes for sure you have not started a church and you are criticizing every man of god must it be like this must it be like that the day you start a church and for two months you are looking for one volunteer to be part of your ushering team at that point you will know it takes grace leadership wisdom and audacity when you see preachers preaching and you see men of god standing up to concord to what they are saying they can relate with it are you getting the point when you fast and pray the gentleman stood here to give testimony and he said it's not easy to stand here you would think it's easy to stand here and jump around until you come and stand here you wouldn't know whether you hold the mic with your left or right hand i once watched some a christian comedy show they were doing an auditioning for comedians these guys are supposed to be the funniest people in their various places and they came together and when they came together i was just looking i didn't laugh for one minute they were afraid their jokes disappeared archbishop benson idahosa said until you do what somebody has done twice don't talk about him after two years you mean this guy still has a small shop like this how about god don't fall our hand and then the day you open your own that looks like looks like a restaurant 
and you find out that nobody comes from morning till night you will do bonanza 50 percent nobody will still come at that point you go back to that bros and say bros you did try you're well done say after me in the name of jesus i have a healthy mental attitude about myself and i refuse to let the opinion of others kill my dream say it i refuse to let the opinion of others kill my dreams they will talk about you they will laugh they will scorn you it's a sign you are making progress may your life not be so boring that your critics ignore you may your life be the news in their secret place that every time they are talking they say my god they are trying to criticize you but they are announcing you by extension so many people came for koinonia as a result of criticism they came to find out what is all this how can a young man be so anointed and when they came some of them from outside their headache disappeared when they crossed in and they sat down at the end of that meeting they have brought more than 50 people to koinonia criticism can be a great tool of publicity don't stop yourself from shining is god speaking to us Ladies and gentlemen, I bring before you right now the grand formula for wealth and abundance. Pray in tongues for one minute. Your life is about to change right now. Please pray inside and outside, wherever you are. In one minute, I'd like you to pray. hallelujah the day i found this key i shouted i not oyedepo's i will never be poor my own i shouted shouted where is the document let me sign out of poverty forever and ever till jesus returns ready write this down the formula for wealth and abundance i told you there is an exact formula there is an exact formula. Ready? Write this down. The amount of money we receive. The amount of money we receive. Open bracket. Your wealth or your income. Your wealth or your income. The amount of money we receive. Will always. Write always in capital letter will always be in exact proportion the amount of money we receive will always be in exact proportion to then write colon number one there are three things i'm about to tell you now the amount of money we receive your wealth your income will always this is a law be in exact proportion to number one the demand or the need for what you do the amount of money you receive will always be in exact proportion to number one the demand or the need for what you do put in bracket the product or the service you offer the demand underline the word demand the demand for what you do Number two, your ability, open bracket, your skill, expertise, proficiency, and then you can close it. Your ability to do what you do. Your ability to do what you do. And number three, the difficulty in replacing you. The amount of money, listen, listen. The amount of money we receive, this is a law. Please listen. I'm giving you a key that will set you free forever. The amount of money we receive will always be in exact proportion to number one,
the demand for what you do. Number two, your ability to do it. And number three, the difficulty in replacing you. Look at what you just wrote. The demand for what you do. Your ability to do what you do. And the extent to which it is difficult to find another replacement to you. This is the grand key. The irrefutable law. When you break prosperity to its unit. The atom of prosperity is this. The amount of money Joshua Selman will ever receive in his life is proportional to the demand for what I do. My ability to do what I do and the difficulty in replacing me. The difficulty in getting another alternative to me. Let's take it one by one. Number one, the demand for what you do. This is the formula for wealth, brothers and sisters. I searched and I found it. Every millionaire I studied, every billionaire I studied, every wealthy family, every wealthy church, every wealthy business subscribe to this formula. The amount of money where you are sitting right now looking at me, the amount of money that will come into your life will be in exact proportion of the demand for what you do, your ability to do what you do, and the difficulty in replacing you. Write this down. Never try to provide a service where there is no notable demand for it. Never try to provide a service where there is no demand for it. This is what makes a lot of people fail financially. You are answering a question nobody is asking. Hallelujah. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Look at this. Look at this. If, if this is my business for instance the level to which I will succeed in this business is first if there is a demand for this is that true? if there is no demand for this who will pay you for it? nobody so many people are starting companies and corporations without asking whether there is a notable demand for what you are trying to provide. The first key to wealth is to realize that you are only paid for something when there is a demand for it. If there are no children in a place, why will you sell pampas? There is no demand for it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Never try to start a business when you want to get a job Trust God to get a job in a place, a corporation, a firm, where there is a demand for their service. Nitel in Nigeria is almost packed out because technology diminished the demand for their service. Are you seeing that now? When there was a demand, what happened? They were rich. They had money. Are you getting what I'm saying? Typewriters, those who sell typewriters today, if they did not change, will they be rich? Because there is no more demand. Never try to provide any service when there is no demand. This is the reason why ministers have their churches full. Because there is a demand for what they are giving. They think they are rich because they are preaching the gospel. Hear me, Koinonia. This crowd, inside and outside, is here tonight because there is a demand. Are you getting what I'm saying? This ministry is excelling not just because God called us. God called us, yes, but we are responding to a demand. 
for as long as there is a demand for my anointing, I remain relevant. For as long as there is a demand for the dimensions of the realities of the kingdom that I teach, they will continue to be relevant. The amount of money we receive will be in exact proportion not to what you do, the demand for it. You started a business, you never found out whether there was a demand for it. That's why when wealthy people are about to come to Africa and start businesses, the first thing they do is they send envoys, representatives, to come and give them statistics. They are testing the waters to see if there will be a demand. They will never come to Africa until they find out that there is a demand to the size to which even if they fail, they will still succeed. That's how the world they think. Is God speaking to us? Write this down. Continue the points that you wrote at first. You either create a demand first. When you want to provide any kind of service, spiritual, financial, educational, whatever, you must either create a demand for it first. Open bracket. Through exposure, orientation, and advertisement. You either create a demand for it or satisfy an existing demand. Look up, please. Okay, write, write it down and look up. You either create a demand for what you want to offer. That means make people want it or see that they already want it by default and supply it. Let me tell you something. Look up. This is the key behind the wealth of Igbo people. I'm not being biased. An Igbo man will never supply anything he has not ascertained a demand for. That's the reason why when others are running away somewhere, he knows there will be a demand for that thing and then he will go there. Unconsciously, unconsciously, many people do not know this is the law that they are fulfilling. Asad, Asad, when did phones come into Nigeria? It depends on which one you're talking about. Generally, Nitel had one thing like that. What our protocol used now, right? That's how it started. Now, watch this. Did you know that until phones came in terms, I mean, our wireless mobile communication now, until phones came, we, we had that one that you dial, right? You touch it and then it goes back. You continue and then it goes back. 73142 and then your state code. You, you remember that, right? Watch this. Some people sat down at the cutting edge of technology and they said, no, we have something to offer. And this is what they said. These people do not know about that possibility. So we use advertisement to create a demand. When they brought out Indomie in Nigeria, what happened? They use advertisement and you are watching. They show a beautiful lady and she picks up the, the Indomie. And she's taking it and you are just celebrating. What they are doing is they are creating a demand. Immediately after that, you say, eh, please, go and buy me um, this and that and that. They create a demand for it. Or they meet an existing demand. Write this down. Always respond to demands and you will be rich. Respond to demands. I think it was the last school of ministry students. I was teaching them on finance in school of ministry. And I told them, if I'm to do business in a crusade ground, I won't sell pure water. If I'm to do business in a crusade ground, I will do mobile toilets. Is there a demand for it? You are joking. You are joking. Sooner or later, no matter how bold you stand, you are in a crusade ground from 3 p.m. in the afternoon. For a night vigil, Abba, you will need to ease yourself. And I won't be there. You will even know it's my own. But you just see me smiling. The goodness of God. As they are worshipping, I will lift my hands. Because the amount of money that comes to me is dependent on the demand. So I look for the demand. What are they looking for so desperately? That they will be willing to do anything. 
may God help you that you are not purging on that crusade ground. You would demand my service a thousand times. And that's good for me. That's exactly the kind of atmosphere I want. As far as my business is concerned. It may look messy, but forget the money is not dirty. You don't defecate on the money. Right? Are you learning something tonight? When a demand for a value or service becomes overwhelming, I want to give you a secret, a big secret right now. Many of you will not imagine how much you would have paid for if you were in a business class. When a demand for a value or service becomes overwhelming or very high, listen, your wealth index grows faster and you can easily get back to your feet even when your business crashes. Let me explain to you what I mean. There is a way, there is a way there can be so much demand on your product that even if you mess up, the demand is too high that you become too big to fail. Are you getting what I'm saying? Absolutely. Look at this. How many days did fuel go off in Nigeria? I mean, I know there's still, there are still pieces of scarcity, but remember the time when all the marketers went. Within 72 hours, Nigeria lost billions. It literally crippled them because of the huge demand for energy. Is that true? Huge demand for energy. There are certain values that when you provide, it becomes almost, humanly speaking, impossible to fail because the demand is, is, is overwhelming. Pure water. Pure water will never fail in Nigeria till Jesus comes. For as long as there is sun, there will be need for it. We drink water like camels in Nigeria. You finish one bag of... Have you seen people take water? Somebody will just take and hold one and squeeze it like an orange. Take another one. Take another one. That's money going. Five, five naira or ten naira if it's cold. Right? And 50 naira just disappeared. Right now. Bam, 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 bam. And the person selling it is smiling. And the person consuming it is paying. Every day you must bath. At least, I believe. Yes. You should bath. I'm speaking to the wider audience, not just you. There are thousands of people following. Right? So the demand for soap will never stop. And the demand is so high. Every day, somebody's birthday, photographers will never run out. Are you getting me? Restaurants will never pack out. If they pack out, it's a demonic thing. Because you are supposed to eat normally three times a day. If you are busy or you don't have money at least once. If you are fasting, that's alright. Praise God. I'm showing you that so many people are poor because they have not responded to demands. Those who have responded to the demands are the ones who are rich. Because you will pay for anything you cannot do for yourself. It's a law. Whatever you cannot do, Guys keep paying in the restaurant every day because they cannot do it for themselves. Always, write this down please, let's hurry up. Always be absolutely sure that there is sufficient and sustainable demand for the value or service you wish to provide before working on providing it. I repeat, always be absolutely sure that there is sufficient and sustainable demand for the value or service you wish to provide before working on providing it. Never get to do something without ascertaining that there will be consistent and sustainable demand for it. The amount of money we receive will always be in exact proportion to number one, the demand. The demand. Watch this. Let me bring it to ministry so that you will understand. Watch this. As a man of God, do you know the reason why the healing and miracle ministries 
have crowds and inevitably have finances and the rest because there is a high demand for that grace are you getting me there is a high demand usually the largest crowds come during the miracle service there are people who because of distance cannot come for every service but during the miracle service they will pay the price and come hallelujah because there is a demand so if the demand for this anointing continues koinonia will only keep getting higher and higher are you getting what i'm saying now is there a demand for what you do or are you just doing it have you ascertained that there is a demand the office where you are working is one thing for you to be employed but it's another thing for the service you are receiving to be needed never try to answer a question nobody is asking the second point your ability to do what you do we said the amount of money you receive will be in exact proportion to your ability your skill your expertise ability and skill and expertise is how you become a leader and a pace setter in what you currently do skill and ability there is a direct relationship between skill and financial abundance please never forget this there is a direct relationship between skill between expertise between competence and proficiency and financial abundance it's not enough to be anointed it's not enough to have something to say or just to talk there must be skill there must be skill you are enjoying what he's playing because although we're in a spiritual house there is skill you see that i'm preaching you think i'm just talking until i break down the psychological implication of the things i'm saying and you see all the things that are interplaying in the midst of my sermon you are laughing in the midst of my sermon i'm rebuking you in the midst of my sermon i'm challenging you all of this requires skill it's not just anointing are you getting what i'm saying your ability to do what you do i love how some people that peel orange have you seen those people that sell orange they are so flawless you bring orange to them and you see them talking they're just talking and peeling it when you see a master do something it becomes flawless that's how you must be if you want to be rich don't think rich people are dafts rich people are highly skilled people in the area where they function those who are promoted in every organization are those who are skilled many believers do not pay attention to skill and expertise we pray in tongues we fast but organize any program for capacity building and see people reject it they think it's carnal they think it's not spiritual so the man sets up the church and he does not know how to speak to people you enter the presence of rich people and you don't know the skill to communicate to them and so they throw you out of that place you speak to business people and you don't have the skill to talk to them ministry is not about preaching and throwing people on the ground there is a lot of skill and proficiency to it if you think it's so easy try it and you will be shocked that you'll be saying what everybody should laugh and they'll be looking at you with anger that's why you won't know what to say again you will know that it's not just about cracking jokes there is a skill not just a spirit the bible says and david led the people with the integrity of heart and the skillfulness of hands david did not throw goliath just through the anointing it took skill the benjamites theologically speaking they were so skilled in throwing slings that they could diverge arrows in other words you could shoot an arrow and they will use a sling and diverge it they were that skilled so don't you think god just came upon this guy samson was not just anointed alone he was skilled bezalel have you read about bezalel the spirit of creativity and excellence came upon him the three hebrew boys the bible says and in all the matters that they were tested in they were found 10 times better how many times in what you do 
do you have ability or just desire you set up a restaurant nobody likes your food something is wrong there is a demand for it but there is no skill and you think it's demons you are fasting and running around your parlor whereas you should go and settle down and meet a caterer not a mediocre a caterer buy the truth it will cost you buy the truth wealthy people are the ones who can pay one million naira to bring a mentor into their lives to teach them something you would think it's a waste you are paying somebody one million just to talk to you but they value it that much how many believers can pay for knowledge they don't want to they just want to receive average and so they remain mediocre it's god speaking to us it takes skill what he's playing he didn't just learn it by the anointing an anointing came upon his skill the fire will never fall until there is a sacrifice what skill are you lifting up to god to anoint he said he will anoint the works of your hands i'm not just talking of business i'm talking of skillful business see yet thou a man diligent 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 skillful many preachers are not skillful many business people are not skillful many employers and employees are not skillful skill is not just an impartation it is learned it is learned it will cost you you will sit at the feet of uncommon mentors to learn but are you willing everybody say ability i made a vow in my life that everything every service and every value i want to offer my generation i will be a master in it let me tell you as you see me like this don't don't let these suits and all these things deceive you i'm such a workaholic you would not like my life you will like me when you see me on suit standing if you come close to me you will run away from me because my life is irritating there's no room for laziness whatsoever there are things I do every day no matter how much I'm tired. Do you think preparing for this, you don't want to know how many books were read. You don't know how many books I read, how many materials I consult to just bring one message. One message that you just hear for two hours. You don't become wealthy when you are lazy if you must bring facts. How many videos I've downloaded on YouTube listen to them in fasting and prayer converted them to mp3s to listen to them listen to three hours six hours videos and summarize them in major points work on them edit the part of them that is unscriptural and add a scriptural touch to it that's hard work brother and all that is for one sermon that you just receive and say wow the sermon is impressive are you getting what i'm saying I returned back we we went to Bida on Saturday and then on Sunday I was there on Monday Tuesday I passed through Abuja to Kogi State to go and greet the family of, of our dear one who transited and from there I returned the school of ministry students were there I think it was, was it yesterday right I returned as I returned I just went to take my bath and rush we were here having lectures from 6 to about past 10 I had barely rested when I got up and then I had to plan, do a lot of things, had to run to town, see a few people this afternoon, I am here. First thing tomorrow morning, I'm off to Kaduna. We have a meeting in Kaduna. From Kaduna, we're passing straight to Kano for an evening meeting. Sunday, we're back, three o'clock on the dot. There is lecture, school of ministry. Monday, there is counseling from morning till night. And next week is my birthday. Hello, don't you ever, hold on, don't talk, we'll talk about birthday after the service. If you ever think wealthy people do not deserve their money, change your mind tonight. You don't know how hard they work. There are people, 6 o'clock, their shops are open. They close past 12. There are others who open to 12 and they close to 7. Skill. Diligence. 
you get up and you say you're a motivational speaker and they ask you what is success you say, eh, according to Brian Tracy according to you what is it you get up and you're a preacher and all you are doing is copying and pasting messages as you are preaching they'll help you complete it and tell you where you got the sermon from and they will tell you the site you downloaded no originality it takes skill you think it's easy to to buttress points i can communicate any point and sing a song to support it listen it's not just anointing it is skill right you know how many things the worship team people don't eat to sing well you just know every time you hear them you are kneeling down find out how many things are out of bounds for them things they love so much he that desires mastery is temperate in all things what are you willing to give up to be skillful don't just say ah apostle is blessed guy koinonia is lucky oh wait until you see our leadership trainings wait and see the 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 the, the workshops and the retreats that we have for our leaders wait and see the way we build them you come and see the the various departments you think these guys are just standing by default look at the ushers standing and position they have been trained to be sensitive to the anointing go for a meeting somewhere and see how people break chairs and wound themselves but you before you get to the ground somebody has come to hold you it's a skill because they are holding people who are bigger than them there is a skill we are that meticulous. So don't just say God is prospering koinonia. Kai, you are blessed. We are blessed through skill. Hallelujah. Let's hurry up so we can stop somewhere. Skill and expertise is the key, is the key to promotion and increased salary. You see somebody who has been grumbling and hating his boss. Tell him be skillful. Be skillful, then you can pray. Stop drumming at the gates of heaven when you are not skillful. Let me tell you something. I humorously tell people if I'm your boss and you are not skillful, I can be a good pastor to you, but I'll fire you. And I'll fire you because I'm a serious Christian. Hallelujah. I will never entertain a worker in church, for instance. I mean, maybe there is I'm, I'm your boss in an office somewhere and you think because we are members of koinonia you are not serious you will never get the job never get the job i don't do all those kinds of things say remember we are from the same place whether we are from the same room if you have not demonstrated the skill if you are so much of a liability for me i will bless you with direct money so that you will go but not to commit things to you he gave unto some five some two and one are according to their several ability not their prayer request their ability their ability i hammer it on the workers to be skillful and it's my desire to see everybody who is at the sound of my voice you must become skillful at something you must become an expert in something you can't become jack of all trades and master of none you have to lay your hands on something be a master in and I guarantee you, you're on your way to the wealthy place. You see the implication of the formula you were just jumping around on? Demand for your service is not enough. You must have both the psychological and intellectual know-how to satisfy that demand. Write it down. Demand for your service is not enough. You must have both the psychological and intellectual know-how to satisfy the demand. The person who babs me is here in Koinonia. He is so skillful. I love him so much and he babs me. No matter how you love me, I will not submit my head to you to play around with. I don't have that luxury. I love you. I can, I, can, I can help you, I can teach you, but I won't do that. How many people are not skillful in what they do? We are prayerful, but we are not skillful. Say, I receive grace to be skillful. Let me tell you the truth. Skill is an asset. Skill is an asset. 
if this guy is so broke if he is so broke today that nothing moves all he needs to do is go to a hotel in Abuja just ask for permission to sit somewhere and then he will begin to play and someone will see him and say can you come and play for one program what's your cost and he uses other psychological factors and walks his way out of poverty forever because of skill the next level of your life is at the mercy of your skill not at the mercy of God alone at the mercy of your skill man of God your preaching skill will determine the next level of ministry your leadership skill your financial intelligence what you are receiving right now there are people standing outside no seats for them there are people looking through the window they are passionate to receive that skill and I guarantee you in a short time their lives will show meditate on these things the Bible says give yourself wholly to them that your profiting will appear unto all there is nothing as lovely as an anointed person who is skillful it's a combination of grace and power anointed and skillful not only that you are anointed to sing you know the rudiments of music that will make you exceptional you are a businessman you are not just a businessman offering services you are exceptionally skilled when your contemporaries look at you they name you after your competence you walk in your office and they give you a name that is synonymous to skill even your enemies will recommend you and say please promote this guy we hate him but there is nobody in this company who can do it as him i gave you a story of somebody in this country he works three jobs three jobs and he works only three times in a week He's so skillful. He's the brain behind many successful companies in Nigeria. I will not mention the names of the companies. You'll be surprised. They beg him. He works only three times. Three times in a week. And the minimum salary he gets for every one of those jobs is 500,000. Minimum. And he works only three times. Skill will defy race. Skill will defy gender skill will defy age if you are skillful the world will honor you that's why wole so Inka received the nobel prize nobody said you are from africa that's why zuckerberg at 30 or 31 is still among the world's richest people skill defies age i'm giving you a key if you sit down in mediocrity you will beg for bread i choose to be skillful in every area i choose to be exceptional i avoid premature manifestation while others are running let them run i will stay back and i will sharpen the knife you are a drummer be skillful i've hammered on these guys you don't want to know how skillful these guys are i've seen their diligence our technical people we emphasize skill not just anointing brothers and sisters it takes skill it takes skill it takes skill the difference between cnn or bbc and one christian channel around that looks as if the television is not working well is skill it's not anointing you watch some channels and you are angry you are angry did they have to do it this way they want cheap labor rather than going to call a media consultant and pay him to produce something that is world class and coordinate this they refuse they say there's one brother who offered to help us and they remain in mediocrity to their detriment powerful message from the throne but nobody can listen many people try to write books and they don't consult with people they bring out a book that is the message is deep but the skill the artistry in writing it is not there td jakes wrote one skillful book woman thou art loose and he made four million dollars from one book four million dollars multiply that by 210 and it will give you the naira equivalent one man's skill build him out of poverty one skill you have written 10 books nobody even knows because you wrote every you wrote like you are talking they didn't teach you that there is a skill you stood somewhere 
and you sang a song and the people in the program vowed that they would never bring you for that meeting again were they blessed yes were they embarrassed yes why you had anointing without skill you had access to cook for a millionaire you would have been his personal chef you blew that moment you were praying in tongues in the kitchen but there was no skill the food burned everything went wrong skill papa adeboye said this himself he said when the redeemed campground started he said that they they paid very little attention to the aesthetics of the place they were more focused on the spiritual impact so people would come ceos managers billionaires will come and sit down and heat will will disturb them and it was making everything uncomfortable and god spoke to him and he said a ceo has ac in his office in his jeep he has ac in his parlor bedroom kitchen everywhere there is ac and then he comes to a very established ministry like that and heat is destroying him and he said they started making plans to add to the aesthetics of the place skill 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 let me talk on the last point and then we'll find somewhere to stop skill is an asset it has rewarded me i have seen the fruit of skill in my life i have seen it exceptionally as i travel to go for meetings i not only see the beauty of anointing i see the excellency of being skillful the Bible says, study to show yourself approved. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word. Skillfully dividing it. When I go for meetings, we go together with the protocol and the worship people. And I watch them as they look at me. When they say, let's now welcome Apostle Joshua Selman. And people are clapping. I'm happy because I have the skill. There's nothing you can do about it. I have it. I paid the price and God gave it. I am grateful, but I'm not apologetic about it. I know the people are going to be wow. Just give me 10 minutes of audience and I will shock you. That's all I need. And when I pick up the mic, I know what to do. With wise counsel, make war. I know that at the end of that meeting, somebody will invite me again. It's not pride. It's the truth. You can be that confident. Skill. Please, when you go back home throughout this week, some of you, as you go home, just sit down and think of your life. Please, don't be in a hurry to sleep. You've been sleeping for years. Wake up this night and think. And say, look at how I've been playing with the opportunities God has been giving. Everything you do, nobody demands what you do again because you are not skillful. They ask you to supply clothes. You supplied nonsense. You packaged it in a rubbish way. You delivered it in, in an unintelligent and unprofessional way. And they vowed not to give you that opportunity again. We're on our way to better days. Now you can sing the song well. We're on our way to better days. It's not just a song. I'm on my way to better days. Hallelujah. Yesterday when I was coming from Abuja, a woman met me. And then when she met me, she wanted me to talk to her on some things. I spoke to her on a few things. And when I was talking to her, this woman was looking at me. And she said, what kind of human being are you? Where are you getting this? And I was on my way going. I said, on my way, I'm on my way rushing. And she said, please, can you give me a minute? And she ran to her room. And this woman brought out an envelope with dollars. I said take i said no, no 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 what is this please no no i'm not i'm not ready and she squeezed it into somebody and i said this is somebody's salary for how many months the gift of a man the skill of a man i don't talk too much about my private life but i just want to challenge you a bit it has nothing to do with age it has nothing to do with gender are you getting what i'm saying i hardly buy things for myself people bring it in honor skill do you know that your skill can take you out from where you are and bail you? Yes, you may be born in Nazareth, but don't die in Nazareth. You may be born in Nazareth. God is speaking to someone here. They think you are a non-entity, but may your skill prove them wrong. May your exceptional qualities prove them wrong. Number three, the difficulty in replacing you. 
Write this word down. To be valued means to not be easily replaceable. To be valued means to not be easily replaceable. To be valued means to not be easily replaceable. To be valued means to not be easily replaceable. Write this down. When your uniqueness or your strategy or your competitive advantage, whatever you want to call it, when your uniqueness or your strategy or your competitive advantage stands you out such that it becomes very difficult right when your uniqueness or your strategy or your competitive advantage stands you out such that it becomes very difficult to find a worthy alternative to you you will be very wealthy When your uniqueness or your strategy or as we call it in the business world your competitive advantage when it is so unique that it stands you out you can get another Joshua Selman but not easily. See that? There are many preachers but there is only one Joshua Selman. There are many anointed men but there is one Joshua Selman. No man can clone the grace. No man can, close the, can clone the skill. No man can clone the uniqueness. So you carve a niche that is free of competition. You carve a niche that is free of intimidation. You stand in a place where you are secured in your uniqueness. Because it's not easy to find a replacement. If you are easily replaceable, it's a sign that you will be broke. Let me tell you how you know you are not valued. Your absence is easily forgotten and ignored. When your absence is easily forgotten, when your absence is unnoticed, it's a sign that your impact is small. Yeah. If I come to work in your company, even if it is one day, I will do something that will make you chase me like your life depends on it. It's called value. The amount of money that comes to you is dependent on the difficulty in finding an alternative to you. When there is no alternative to you, they will pay whatever price. You will name your price. You will name your price. Hallelujah. I have taught people these things. It's difficult to get another mic. These guys are all skillful. It's difficult to get another Elijah. It's difficult to get them. No, they are all unique. David Dam is here. Come. All these guys you see, they are skilled people, but they have their uniqueness. There is a way David Dam is so unique, you cannot clone him, no matter what happens. There is a way Sam comes on stage, and you know he's in a class of his own. What do you have in your life that truthfully you can say, when it comes to this, God has put me in a class? Void of competition. Some of you, it's only trouble that you're in a class of your own. Gossiping. All these bad, bad things that are bad, bad qualities. That's what you are in a class of your own. Tonight, change. Everybody is selling. But there is a way you do yours. The day you don't open your shop, people come and there are five shops open, but they are waiting for you. They say, Abba, can't you buy? I say, uh -huh. There is, I like that smile. There is a unique touch to what you do. There is a way you do what you do. You are the happiest staff in your corporation. The day you don't come, the entire workforce is gloomy. They are, they are sad. They miss you. Some of you, nobody is missing you right now. It's bad. It's bad. It's a serious issue. Think about it. Nobody is missing what you are giving. ATC called me this morning and they said, they wanted to do a novelty football match in honor of my birthday. They said they want to play a football match with Koinonia to honor me on my birthday. I said, wow, that's so touching. Who would do it for you and when? 
It's a serious question. I'm not intimidating you. Who has chosen to go out of his way to do something for you? You are saying there is no money. There are people they are chasing with money. People bless me every day. I say it in, with all humility. It's not because I'm Joshua Selman. When you are not easily replaceable, you become an asset even to your enemies because they need you to remain in business. They need your news to remain relevant. Even your enemies desire you to continue. Are you that unique? Or you are just general? I'm a general businessman. General talkative. What do you sell? Television. What is unique about? Why should I come and buy TV from you and not from someone else? Do you have that uniqueness? What do you do? I plot. Who have you plotted? Many people. What is your uniqueness? Is it that you plot on time? Is it that you plot well? Is it that the lady's hair will not pain her when you plot? What is your uniqueness? I refuse to be easily replaceable. I refuse it. Pray that prayer in one minute. I refuse it. Please pray. I'm showing you a key. We're not done yet. But I just want you to pray it. And then we'll do an evaluation quickly and we're out. Pray. They have belittled you because you are easily replaceable. You have refused to work on yourself. Money is available, I tell you. Money is available. The millions are available. You are not yet unique enough to be rich. You have not qualified for the world. You are grumbling about it. You are complaining. For five years, you are still at that lower level. Somebody came, a fresh graduate. You paid his school fees. He's now your boss. To what degree are you easily replaceable? Pray. Lord, may I be so unique that I become an asset, an asset to all and sundry. May my absence create a vacuum that cannot be easily filled. I'm ready to pay the price to be that unique, world class, not a local champion. You may start small, but you hold on to strong convictions. Convictions that nothing will bend. Not cultural barriers. Convictions that nothing will bend. Not the limitations of your past. Convictions that nothing will bend. Pray. An award-winning banker. Exceptional. An award-winning CEO. An award-winning man of God. So anointed so unique you become a standard you become a leader you become a reference it's not a gift it's a reward it's not a gift hallelujah do this and in one day you will get what somebody will get in a lifetime Somebody who earns 100,000 per month. How much is that per year? How much is that per year? 1.2 million. How much is that in 20 years? 24 million. Someone can give it to you in one day. As a reward to your uniqueness. The lifetime. One day my father looked at me. And said you are an old man. You are a young man with gray hair. What sort of person are you? may people look at you like Jesus and say what wisdom is this they look at you and wonder they don't know what to say about you let me tell you something stop responding to your critics the only response you give your critics is greater results greater results let them keep talking the gap will be too wide they will be forced to shut up continue moving let me tell you what you are seeing in ministry right now the level of excellence and the anointing is my preparation of yesterday. Tomorrow will show you what I'm doing today. In my mind, I've left this level. No, I've left this level. I've left this level. Gentiles!
this is what will make gentiles come to your light and kings to their brightness millionaires will come and they will queue up they will queue up one woman asked me a question she said my son how come people come for counseling hundreds of people and they sit down from morning till night just to talk to you for two minutes and five minutes i didn't know what to tell her i said it's the same reason why a baba or a rich man will run backward to see a herbalist and the herbalist said turn back and he will turn back he knows what he's looking for when you hold the keys to the door they will look for you they will beg for you they will pay you to open the door oh i found my way out of poverty i found my way out i found my way out there is an eternal demand for what i do i will never run out of relevance there is an eternal demand for as long as there is one soul that is not yet saved there is a demand for as long as there is one sick body that is not healed there is a demand for as long as there is one person one family under oppression i will be needed for as long as there are people who need to be taught the principles of the kingdom i will be needed the, the, we are an endangered species a million of me is still not enough to fulfill the demand you say you are a leader how uncommon are you one time i went to speak in a, a, a small business leadership conference and i sat quietly there were bank managers and people everybody came and was just bragging and talking stories and speaking rubbish i was very disappointed in all humility because i had high expectations for them i didn't know how much i had worked on myself they spoke and everybody spoke nonsense and i came out when i spoke brothers and sisters i tell you the truth and i i lie not I do not know how many complimentary cards and all of that and all of that and they were talking and i looked i said on a good day i will go to their offices and they will drive me out now they are following me with complimentary cards stop following success attract it through your diligence stop chasing money attract it through your skill stop chasing money pay the price and you will drive it away and it will refuse to go It is for this very reason that doctors, lawyers, engineers, soldiers are very rich. This very reason. Those we call professionals. This is why. Because of um, they are, the kind of work they do requires a lot of skill. Right? Their professions require a lot of skill that cannot be learned informally and then they require public licensing and authorizations to function so it limits the number of people that can imitate them that's why they are rich if you've ever wondered why doctors are rich engineers architects and all of the people that do what we call professional courses is because there are licenses and to get the licenses and authorizations you need to pass through something and not everybody can do that so they are few and the demand for what they have is so high and they can set any price any price may you be so powerful that you can name your price and people will still pay you and say thank you for helping us the same way you queue in a filling station you are going to use your money to pay for the fuel but you will say thank you because it's so much in demand there is none of you under the sound of my voice who will walk what i'm telling you and will not be rich no not one everybody say faithfulness say it again faithfulness Matthew chapter 25 we're going to read three verses 21 23 and 29 thank you Matthew 25 we're reading 21 23 and we're reading 29 I just want to show you something and then we'll begin to pray this was the parable of the talents five two and one talent and this to the one who had five his Lord said unto him after being faithful he said well done good and what faithful servant the 
thou has been faithful over a few things let me show you how greatness happens in the kingdom thou has been faithful over a few things what's your reward i will make thee ruler over many things when you are promoted in the kingdom many things happen to you one the anointing upon your life is multiplied number two your operation becomes easy number three god expands your self-influence to cause more people to hear your voice is a product of faithfulness you have been faithful over a few things i gave you a teaching anointing and i did not give you an anointing for miracles and you were not ashamed to teach the people as best as you knew to every time they ask you man of god why is it that we don't see miracles in your life be patient i'm coming i'm not ashamed to say god is bringing me there for now is the teaching grace he has given me i will teach i will make bible study notes and god is saying this is a man who will not only be a good shepherd he will be a good manager of my anointing and one day that man comes to a meeting and all of a sudden an impartation comes upon him the dimension that has been absent is now supplied by the spirit he goes back not just as a teacher but as a worker of miracles 23 to the man with the two talents he said his lord said unto him well done good and faithful servant same thing thou has been faithful over a few things so it's not the size of what you were giving the same commendation i will make thee ruler over many things let's go to 29 29 for unto everyone that hath this is a mystery in the kingdom that when you have is a sign that you were a good manager and the reward is that he shall have what abundance of anything abundance here doesn't just talk of finance abundance of the anointing abundance of influence abundance of access to revelations and then it says but from him that hath and is not faithful now he says even that which he had shall be taken away it is not only satan that takes things away god too takes things away are we together now not every reduction is caused by demons there are reductions that are a testimony it's a report card from god to you that something is wrong with your stewardship when god increases you members rise today and mysteriously members just go down sometimes it could be that it's a message from god that i trusted you with 30 people and i observed your stewardship your stewardship does not merit multiplication you rise in finances and then sometimes you just go down never to rise again it could be a message that you need to upgrade on your stewardship you rise in influence and all of a sudden you find out within a season all your helpers are no longer there all the people whose voice who who listen to your voice and acknowledge your voice are no longer there it could be a sign that you are abusing the privilege of stewardship are we together the prayer that you need to pray in this season is for God to help you that whilst you are waiting for a supply of greater dimensions of his grace but that he grants you the fortitude to be faithful if God gives you 10 naira be faithful if God gives you one shoe polish it don't sit down running your eyes on every shoe and say don't worry except God is not my God I'm coming and and that shoe will say you are not coming this is not how to get me you get me by washing the one you have it's a rubber shoe wash it it's a 200 naira trouser wash it are we together now we live in a society that applauds people for living a fake life that claps for people for jumping seasons and as soon as they clap for you and as frequent as they clap for you that's the same way they will clap against you because every time you jump up you must go down but when you grow up you remain up the difference between jumping and growing is that you are still connected to your root when you jump you are suspended nothing backs you no support so you must come down when you grow up 
the tallest building in the world is still connected to the earth that's why it stands nothing suspended has an a, a, the ability to stay indefinitely when they send satellites to orbit the earth and orbit other planets and all of that after a time requirement because they are not connected to the earth they must be sent back planes don't fly indefinitely in the sky they get to a point where they must make contact with the earth again for some of you here this is your miracle service tonight the lord is speaking to you you are living a fake life go back to the basics let me tell you this don't ever generalize success just because everybody around you is successful does not mean you are successful go back and learn the principles corporate success is deception are you hearing what i'm saying now we are all successful a day will come life will separate you and you stand as an individual and it will be a test of your values whether or not it's like a defense the way students do defense you will need to defend and validate your success any door god has not opened for me i'm not under pressure to go because when he opens it he will open it in honor do you know if god does not open a door your tenacity can force that door to open that you forced a door and it opened a man can go around with complimentary cards i'm a man of god i'm a gospel artist in fact you've not had anything like you just invite me and watch what happens you can go around and out of the 1000 invitations you beg for you may get one or two or three or four and you call it increase you see when you open the door by yourself you have to keep it open by yourself but when god opens it god when he opens it he keeps it by his own hand the hands that lifted me will uphold me to the end i will not be afraid there is a hand that lifted me will uphold me to the end i will not be hallelujah Years ago, I had a conversation. We we're about to pray with a gentleman, and he asked me a very honest question. He said, Apostle, I've come for Koinonia and I've seen the crowds of people. And he asked a question. He said, Can you reproduce these results? And I said, That's not me to answer. You are asking time, not me. Keep watching. And I think two weeks ago, he sent me a text. You know, just joking. I'm, I'm just saying it. And he's just sent a text. And he said, Apostle, you are dangerous. I say, I'm not dangerous. The laws of God are dangerous. It is not me. It is the laws of God. Whoever will keep these truths, it will work for you. Are you getting what I'm saying? Even if you are afraid of yourself, trust his laws. And watch them shock you. And make a wonder out of your life. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. In a few minutes now, we're going to begin to pray. And many of you will stand and watch your life change as if it's magic. It is not just because a man who is anointed is standing before you. There is a system in the kingdom. We make our boast first in the Lord and then in the power of his might. His might, the power of his might, the power that is released when his laws operate those who don't understand will look at these things and think it's boasting it's not boasting it's true the predictability of god's principles hallelujah i challenge you today that much more than the miracles you are receiving you must trust god to go back and say lord teach me your ways we reign in this kingdom we're about to pray now i want to show you a very dangerous scripture that god opened my eyes to brothers and sisters if god does not open your eyes to see how a thing works you may never know do you know that in every challenge that you have right now a way of escape is there but it takes god to open your eyes psalm 77 turn there let me show you something psalm 77 and verse 19 
Psalm 77 verse 19 give us from amplified if it's possible lion of Judah my trust is in you Alpha and Omega my trust is in you I am that I am my trust is in you tonight I put them on you my trust is in you it says your way in delivering your people was through the sea listen carefully the same sea that was an obstacle he said their way of escape was inside that water inside that trouble he says and your path through the great waters how can you be in trouble and god says in that trouble that's where your answer is but it takes your eyes to see it god hides a formula in your pain and keeps it there until revelation opens you to it he says your way of delivering your people was through the sea the same sea he said that your path through the water yet you pass through it and cover it and nobody can trace your footsteps this one give us king james again it will take revelation for you to know how can i look at a water challenges and great waters he said thy way is in the sea in that rain challenge is a formula that can make you a landlord but it will take the spirit of revelation in that sickness that brought you to koinonia is hidden a mystery that can bring you into the healing anointing it says thy way is in the sea and thy path in the great waters and thy footsteps are not known god what kind of god are you you do something and cover it so no man can just look and say ah I, uh. but when he opens your eyes all of a sudden you will discover that so the water can part i never knew and all of a sudden there will be dry ground and you walk to it and the egyptians will think and god will cover it and say i don't open it for everybody it is a way but not for everybody are we together these are some of the deep mysteries about the anointing sometimes you see me give you instructions that don't make sense shout jesus keep quiet it does you will try it and it won't work it's a mystery there is a way in it there is a pathway that when god opens your eyes to the systems of the kingdom then you can see things that don't make sense and make wonders out of them god is speaking to someone here that the prayer you are praying the answer is already within your environment all it takes is for your eyes to see Hagar was punished by Sarah. The Bible says she was in the wilderness dying of test. The young lad cried to heaven. When an angel appeared, all of a sudden they saw an oasis bringing water. The water was there, but her eyes could not see. The ways of God. And let me tell you, this is why we come to, how, to the house of God. Because there is something about the corporate gathering of God. Give us verse 13 of the same scripture. Give us verse 13 of the same scripture. Go ahead and read. Thy ways, O God, where is it? Is found in your sanctuary. When we come here, it says in your sanctuary, in your house, you have, you have ordained a place that when we meet, you will show us a way. When God put this miracle service and called this ministry and put all of these things, it's not just a ritual. There is a mystery about the sanctuary he has ordained. That every time you come before God, he must open a way. So don't carry your challenges and come and you are wondering and say, I went to every church. I don't know what the church you went to believe. But in this sanctuary, there is a way there is a way i dare to tell you there is a way man of god i have been in i've gone everywhere with all due respect i don't know where you went to but there is a way in the sanctuary solomon dedicated a place and said lord let me tie a covenant to this sanctuary if any man prays 
and turns this direction not for the sake of their faith for the covenant in this place answer them when they were about to kill daniel in the days of that of, of nebuchadnezzar daniel opened the gate and faced jerusalem he, he was afraid he couldn't depend on his faith he opened the door and said lord i engage the covenant that covenant that solomon made with the temple in jerusalem it is not only a man that can bring miracles a place can be anointed to birth miracles it was in a place that jacob went to sleep he never met a man but he met a place and that night the heavens were open and he saw a ladder that connected the heavens he said this is the house of god this is the gates of heaven tonight i want to stir up faith many of you have come you have made sacrifices pastor femi thank you thank you so so much praise the lord many of you have come from several places you have made sacrifices please don't come here wasting your time and don't come here wondering let's see what god will do already i can answer you you won't get anything already let me let me be honest with you because god is not a magician but there are people that come here determined and say lord i have seen you in this place i can't go back this way that something must shift in my life something must change in my life not all of you may be trusting god for sickness for healing you know but many of us are trusting god for one thing or the other i like you to believe there is a way in the sea i bring you a word there is a way this kingdom operates by mysteries the bible says there is no temptation given but that which is common to man you are not the first to have house rent issue you are not the first to have financial issues listen carefully you are not the first to have academic issues you are not the first to have excuse me spiritual issues you are not the first but though we are few we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river. That's a part of this song I like. Though we are few, there are witnesses. There are people who have been healed. There are people who God changed their lives overnight. There may not be many, but they are on earth, testifiers of His faithfulness. As a testament that if God did it before, he can do it again and this is the song we'll be singing forever oh is the lord oh is the lord listen it is our confidence in god and our confidence in his ways that gives us the audacity to gather people and say come he will change you without the presence of god and access to the ways of god we are we are scammers we are not we are not just liars we are scammers why do you gather people and tell them come we dare you to come we call a solemn assembly not only because we know god by the privilege of his grace we have found grace with him and he has made us stewards of the mysteries ephesians chapter 3 this will be the last scripture ephesians chapter 3 verse 2 from verse 2 it says if ye have heard paul is speaking of the dispensation of grace of the grace of god which is given me to you what for your sake how that by revelation verse 3 he made known unto me how did paul know it by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as i wrote afore in few words verse 4 whereby when you read another word is whereby when you experience it you may know the basis ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of christ verse 5 a mystery that has been hidden in other ages let me tell you some of the things we are doing although they are spiritual although they are biblical they are mysteries that have been hidden 
they are there the same way many people swam through the red sea although there was a way it took a generation of men to be open to that mystery there are many mysteries that control results that have not been routed by many but the bible says that in other ages was not made known to the sons of men as it is now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets how by the spirit by the spirit it was a revelation that god gave me that people write their requests and come and drop here it's not something that i copied from anywhere it's a revelation stupid though but look at the testimonies that have come out from it are we blessed now god's servant bishop david oyedeko was given the revelation of feet worship a revelation that had not been known to anybody people read it and all of a sudden the testimonies that come out of it people had communion people take communion in orthodox churches and different churches and just take it even while they are drunk but somebody came with a light about communion and all of a sudden people take communion now and cancers just die there are mysteries brothers and sisters there are many people that never knew that the house of god is powerful praise the lord are we together so you must understand that god in this season wants to shift you but he won't just shift you just by saying shift there are mysteries tonight i bring you a word there is a way in the sea hallelujah there is a way there is a way there is something god can do about your finances there's something god can do about your family situation you left fire on the mountain and came back you wait until the red sea parts and god will rubbish pharaoh tonight in your presence rise up on your feet begin to thank the lord for what you have heard tonight cry for the grace to be faithful go ahead cry for the grace to be faithful cry for the grace to be faithful lord grant me the grace to be faithful grant me the grace to stay as you lift me grant me the grace not to rush seasons in my life grant me the grace Grant me the grace. Hallelujah. Just pray one prayer. Lord, change my story. Visit me tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Pray with faith. Change my story. Visit me. Visit me tonight. Hallelujah. Tonight is an unusual service because time has gone. We are going to be very, very fast. Very, very fast at that. Um, like I told us, we are going to start praying for the sick. We'll start by praying for the sick. And um, now this is how we are going to do it. Because of, because of, those of you outside, don't worry. You don't worry. Wherever you are, you will be attended to. Are we together? You will be attended to so hold on before i ask the people to come you don't have to just cooperate with the ushers if they need you to do anything just just it's a temporary inconvenience we're doing this just to be able to manage time and to do all that we have to do hallelujah praise the lord now please hold on let's let's not be distracted those of us who are trusting God for healing is a miracle service. It's not just limited to healing. 
but we are going to pray for the sick now now we are going to do this very fast and um, please those that will be ministering let's let's do it very fast it's not in how long listen let me tell you something about the anointing it's not just in how long you are touched or the frequency just a touch is enough for the anointing the same way a small drug can step into your body and that's it the wonders are done i'd like you to believe god to touch you change your life whether it's a blood disease whatever it is let's agree with you hallelujah we'll do that very very fast while we are doing that please um if you have come with your requests ushers um please help them pr department you can join them protocol let's just join and see how we can make this very fast so that at the same time we are collecting the prayer requests remember it's not a ritual um when it's time when they come to you you can hand over the request if you are yet to write yours you can quickly do that those online following us from whatever nation you can just connect your requests are already there and we're praying the power of god will touch it there too hallelujah praise the lord please i like you to be very intentional i know that most times we do this at the miracle services but be careful lest you make a ritual out of this and then at the same time waste your time i have seen the power and the glory of god um, upon my life and upon this ministry in in ways that that are humbling in ways that are powerful expect a testimony please refuse that you're not going back the way you came no matter what the medical situation is remember i told you there is a way in the sea there is a way hallelujah when i do that um we'll finish it and then we can now minister deliverance and just prophesy so that we are able to make time praise the lord father we're gathered tonight by your wisdom and your power lord we're about to minister to those who are sick and lord we trust your power to heal we trust your power to heal to the uttermost in the name of jesus anoint my hands anoint every man and woman of god who will be ministering to the sick let there be the hearing of faith let there be the walking of miracles do this and glorify yourself in the name of jesus christ praise the lord uh, father we give you all the praise let your power flow let miracles begin in this place we give you all the praise we give you all the honor in the name of jesus christ i pray amen please make sure that while you submit your prayer request be in the attitude of prayer if i were you i'll be praying in the spirit don't be distracted just because we are taking our time to pray for the sick god bless deserve the glory and the honor so we lift our hearts and worship as we bless your holy name yes you deserve the glory the honor yes lord we lift our hands and worship as we praise your holy name for you are great you do miracles so great yes there is no one else There is no one else like you Yes, you are great And you do miracles so great Oh, there is no one else like you Oh, there is no one else like you Sing, you deserve the glory. Say, you deserve the glory. And 
the honor, Lord. And the honor. So we lift our hands. So we lift our hands and worship as we praise. As we praise oh, 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 yes, you deserve the glory. That's why we worship tonight. So we lift our hands and worship as we pray. Your holy name is Yahweh. You're the miracle. There is no one, no one else that can touch me like you do. They can heal me. Say there is no one else. Yes, you are great. You do miracles. There is no one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is no one. There is no one. Say, you are great. You are great. You do miracles. over. Hey! 
Shout it in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that every force from the pit of hell standing against my lifting tonight I challenge you. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Everyone. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Every force. Nothing will stop your lifting. This is a season of lifting in the name of Jesus. Set! Pray, pray! Every song shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. Say in the name of Jesus. Every recurrent pattern in my life right now I declare you destroyed lift your voice and begin to pray challenge every recurrent pattern by the anointing of the Holy Spirit Every recurrent pattern in the name of Jesus. Every recurrent pattern. Abu Sabala Katupa Shabren Legadea. In the name of Jesus. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Every dimension of grace apportioned for me tonight. I declare that I must step into it. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Every dimension of grace. Every dimension of grace. Every dimension. 
Lekata Marakato Shabababalakata Karote Sedekete Negos Embrakato Sakata Kata 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 Shekete Kete Kete Embraka Babakato Patu Shekadias Sadabalada Balikatos Kepranda Kato Shabakatos Shekete Kete 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 Make sure you are praying every dimension Every dimension, every dimension. Say in the name of Jesus, Father, let your fire fall upon my life, upon my family, and destroy every planting that is not of God. Lift your voice and pray. Let your fire. The visitation of your fire. The visitation of your fire upon my life. Upon my life. Pray. Shake it back at all. Back at all. Let your fire fall. Let your fire fall. Upon my life, let your fire bring a separation. Lift your hands. I'm about to pray for you now. We are never doing the same thing every time I rebuke devils. There are lives and destinies that are under the yokes of darkness. It's time for the devil to give up. Are we together? Are you ready to shout that name that is above all names? Let me tell you, I want you to be childlike tonight and just follow these instructions and watch the wonder-working power of God in your life. At the count of three, I want you to shout that name, Jesus, everywhere. And as you shout that name, the sword of the Lord will pierce through every root of every challenge and begin to command victory for you are we together now especially for those of you who are coming here for the first time i'm ministering deliverance now every yoke of darkness that has tied anyone's life as you shout this name may the visitation of that fire are you ready now one two three I command the fire, the fire of the spirit. Bring them up, the fire of the Holy Ghost. Right now, every altar and everything, every high thing that is not of God, I curse you now. I curse you now. I curse you now. Shukete hallelujah i think the ground is good enough you can bring them in the name of jesus i'm praying now i'm still praying anyone's destiny that is under siege right now i stretch my hands in the name of jesus i'm seeing i'm seeing like bolts of fire falling on people if it falls on you your destiny is opening up lord where are they i stretch my hands may the visitation of fire Open destiny is now. Shake it to katakata. Open destiny is now. Open destiny is now. Inside, outside. Open destiny is now. Open destiny is now. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a horn and I'm seeing fire burning it. Please be sensitive. This is a symbol of authorities that sit over lives and families. He said in Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 18, What seest thou? He said, Four horns. These are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Jerusalem, against Judah, so that no man does lift his head. He said, But I have sent four carpenters. Lift your hands. I'm praying right now. In the name of Jesus, the fire of God is falling on people inside and outside. In the name of Jesus, anyone here, Shabo Sekatos Kabariakata under any kind of demonic siege at the count of three 
that horn, that symbol of authority that has tied your family, that has tied your life, it is uprooted. One, two, three. I release that fire now. I release that fire now. I release that fire now. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I decree and declare by the anointing of the Holy Ghost anyone here whose life is under siege be delivered now hallelujah the Lord wants to visit the issue of barrenness but then he's using physical barrenness as a prophetic symbol for productivity so that you are not surprised if you are a man and the anointing still visits you the womb is the place where seed is planted that womb can be anything a woman's womb is just a type and a shadow of a system of increase there are people a barren woman is a woman whose womb cannot receive and multiply seed the way it is physically that's how it is spiritually you receive the word but it never produces its barrenness you receive finances but it never multiplies its barrenness lift your hands as i pray listen many people many people are going to be delivered from just this prayer you will be surprised to know that many of your requests are tied to this one prayer lift your hands i'm praying now that in the name of jesus ah, i tell you all i see is just fire that's what i'm seeing every spirit responsible for barrenness in anyone's life right now by the fire of the holy ghost i declare be delivered now be delivered now be delivered now by the anointing of the holy ghost overflow one i'm seeing three people I'm praying now I know because of time we can't let you come in but I'm seeing three people two are ladies one is a gentleman this prayer is for you there is an anointing as I'm speaking that is coming overflow one on people outside the Lord is bringing massive deliverance barrenness is a dangerous thing listen whatever you give a barren person is as well as wasting your time because it cannot grow it cannot multiply jesus saw the fig tree it was taken from the earth taken from the earth but it was not producing in the name of jesus i'm still praying that prayer again that any life here that satan has rendered barren i stand by the anointing of the holy ghost and i decree and declare be delivered right now be delivered right now from every siege of barrenness be delivered right now be delivered right now from every siege of barrenness hallelujah Kemi who is Kemi Kemi um, I may not maybe I may just talk to one or two people Kemi you are wearing red it's like it's a guy called Kemi who is that you are wearing red what's your name uh -uh, i didn't i'm saying this is i'm saying i know that kemi is a lady's name it's not a guy i will pray for you it's your hunger this is you are wearing red what's your name your name is kemi yes sir you are wearing red i'll pray for you but gentlemen you are here there is a hunger that you carry listen you came from ah uh, i'm seeing cross river yeah? Cross River, Cross River, Cross River. You yes, came. Sir. Yes, sir. The Lord is saying, I should tell you. Listen to me. Yes, you came because of a hunger yes, sir. to truly get an anointing. Yes, sir. But you see, this message I preach was for you. Yes, you heard what I'm saying? Yes, this running around to want to do ministry by force is not the way it works. The Lord Himself, He will give you an anointing, but He will give you direction. What you need is an encounter with the Word and direction. But you will never go back the same. Receive that anointing. A new dimension a new season my dear there is a spirit of prophecy upon your life in the name of jesus christ i stir up that spirit that dimension i open you to a realm where you begin to see and hear the sounds of the spirit 
in the name of Jesus. As I'm praying this, I'm seeing number 11. The same thing that came on this lady. The anointing of the spirit is looking for 11 people. There is the spirit of prophecy. Where are they? I stretch my hands right now. 11 people. 11 people scattered inside and outside. In the name that is above all names. Receive that spirit. You need it. I stir it up from your spirit man. I stir it up from your spirit man. The grace for prophecy. Makatos Kabarakata. Sons and daughters stepping into dimensions of prophecy. Some of you, you have only had dreams. Only dreams. But I shift you to dimensions of visions. Prophetic visions. You will never be the same. I'm still praying this. I'm still praying this. There are people, this is your call. But no anointing has ever stirred it. In the name of Jesus, I shift you in the spirit. Into that anointing. The very anointing. The seat of the prophetic. I move you by grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. I activate it. I activate it. That dimension. I'm praying I don't know why God is moving this way there are people the call of God is upon your life but you don't know it you don't know that the call of God is upon your life but tonight as a token the spirit of God is visiting you whether you know it or not Lord where are they I stretch my hands now if the hand and the mandate of God is upon your life for your destiny in the area of the fivefold, I declare let the anointing of the spirit locate you as it locates you the Lord begins to prepare you where are they receive that grace receive that grace receive that grace hallelujah there is a dangerous spirit our time is up hold on but there is a spirit that i want to rebuke now i just saw written in the air rejection hold on many of you do not know the reason why good things never reach you you stand you are watching and an opportunity come rejection is not just a state it's a spirit lift your hands don't pray don't do anything just lift your hands hallelujah that's the instruction the lord is giving me just lift your hands just do what i'm asking you to do in the name of jesus many of you will be surprised now there are people it's like a yoke i'm seeing like cowries these cowries that they use that's what i'm seeing and in the name of jesus christ as the power of god is smashing that rubbish that's how many people who have been despised been despised the bible says where you have been forsaken so that no man passes through you it says you become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations right now i stretch my hands from the front to the back overflow one two three the roadside and online if there is anyone here under the siege of the spirit of rejection right now in the name of jesus in this silence may the anointing of the spirit begin to bring deliverance right now i'm praying it's happening right now taking away that spirit from your life please be sensitive we are doing a quick walk rejection 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 by the anointing of the holy ghost rejection i command that spirit to leave i'm still praying i command that spirit to leave i command that spirit to leave alongside with this there are people bad luck good things must always turn to evil when it hold, when it enters your hand no matter what it is if they give you money something must go bad a good opportunity it must be destroyed you enter a relationship something must happen i stretch my hands right now in the name of jesus if there is anyone under the sound of my voice who is under this kind of siege here at this miracle service fire 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 
I release the fire of the spirit right now from the front to the back inside outside I command your deliverance right now I command your deliverance right now I command your deliverance right now keep your hands lifted and pray mighty things are happening in the spirit I asked us to pray a prayer that the Lord put in my heart patterns I'm still seeing it again there are some of you the same thing happens to every member of your family at certain seasons everything must happen either somebody dies or someone doesn't marry straight and correct you must have a child before you get married or something someone will rape you someone raped your mother someone will rape some kind of nonsense patterns in the name of jesus at the count of three i want you to shout jesus lord i pray that as your people shout that name every pattern that happened to the fathers that is about to replay itself in the life of your people let it be broken at the count of three one two three i declare those patterns broken now those patterns broken now those patterns broken now those patterns broken now hallelujah the spirit of delay god is taking delay from someone's life that's what i'm seeing god is taking delay i'm seeing it going delay 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 not everybody but i'm seeing god is it will surprise you after this miracle service the kind of speed that your life will enter delay hallelujah my dear come this come this your first time here where are you coming from you're coming from abuja yes, i want to pray for you you had the prayer i just said we should pray yes. that prayer was was for you don't be embarrassed eh? there is a spirit of delay that must live your life you are a great lady but i see delay come it's a demonic spirit and if you are not delivered and you get up and go to abuja just like that it will be as if you did not come before the presence of God but I lay my hands upon your head and in the name of Jesus Christ the spirit of delay I call you by name let this lady go now by the anointing of the Holy Spirit go now live her life forever in the name of Jesus that lady wearing lime cloth you this one come quickly please Look at me. Salvation has come to your family. The month of June. Look at me. The month of June, I'm prophesying by the Spirit, is the month for your family. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, He's changing everything. Everything completely by the Spirit of the living God. He's changing everything by the Spirit of the living God. He's changing everything by the Spirit of the living God. I'm hearing a name, Doris. I'm hearing a name Doris Doris who is Doris I'm hearing a name Doris Doris are you Doris your name is Doris I'm going to pray for you your name too is Doris that's your baby I will pray for you look at me look at me shout Jesus My dear look at me witchcraft i'm stretched the lord is just saying i should stretch my hands in front of you i stretch my hands and i declare i'm seeing an altar catching fire in the name of jesus christ i declare it by the spirit i stretch my hands that's what the lord is saying i should do i stretch my hands it catches fire now oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Victory 
please look at me where are you coming from I'm from Congo from Congo hold my hands say shame and reproach shame and reproach is taken from my life is taken from my life forever forever say it again shame and reproach shame and reproach Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Shame and reproach is taken from your life forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Shame and reproach is taken. Hold on, I'm not done with that. I decree and declare that shame and reproach is taken from your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody's father has not been paid for 11 years. I'm seeing, I don't know what the condition is, but I'm seeing at, at 11 years or so, your father has not been paid. It's something they have been pursuing. Please make sure you are honest. Who is that come? Your dad, where is he? He's in Lagos. You too? Where is he? Do you believe that if I pray for you, a miracle will happen? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we make it happen. By the Spirit of the living God, I decree and declare that between now and the next 90 days, let there be a miracle. Let there be a miracle. In the name of Jesus Christ. Why are you all coming? Your parents. No, don't, I, if, if I pray, most of you is not it's not that word. You are just coming just because you want it may be related in the name of Jesus. I'm I'm just praying for you. As I'm touching you, you see. Let me let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. You see this touch. You see this touch. Just this touch. You see there is power in it. It's just that we are very carnal people. Do you understand? After service, you can hug me and jump on me. But now, what is on me? is what makes this touch different you see that you can you can have it is not just a touch maybe a touch for jamboree no 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 you can i can lay my hands on you right and then something can come upon you i can lay my hands upon you and then your life will change sometimes you see me just speak and you think it as as i pray like this you see watch your life and see what it becomes are, are you getting what i'm saying now that's 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 the point the word of god that you can't see it does not mean it's not resting on you when it rests on you like a hen over her, her the eggs it will stay there until there is a performance this thing you see is not just power it's authority it's authority there is authority in the spirit it's not just power it's authority are you, are you getting what i'm saying now so it is it is a grace it's a gift that god can give a man he said for i am a man under authority i say to one go it's just that many of us just sit down and we keep watching I, be, the fact that you are here within this vicinity alone let me tell you whether you are inside or outside your life will never never be the same if i never get to touch you it's just that we are carnal we are carnal so we just feel that until you make contact with the man of god your life will not no 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 no. i don't have to give you a word of knowledge the anointing that you see this anointing through words through words i can speak to you like this the word of god carries the anointing do you understand it's not just until maybe you, you make contact and lay hands and some of those things are just psychological it is the power of god as i'm speaking over your life if you believe you will be surprised are we together now yes a miracle service we may not have all the time to minister the way we want to but this word if all i do here is to just come and speak I told you about the creative dimension of prophecy men are made by the prophetic word that is on them what is on you is what compels creation to respond to you in a certain way a man can lay hands on you and not lay anything everybody ministers according to the dimension of his grace my dear this lady looking at me come 
the Lord is saying I should tell you what happened to Queen Esther in the Bible will happen to you I don't know who you are but the Lord is saying I should tell you that what happened to Adasa Queen Esther in the Bible I release that grace upon you in the name of Jesus Christ so brothers and sisters I like your heart to be open the if you come here and you are prayed for I lay hands on you and you miss the prophetic sessions you really miss the miracle service you see that you miss the prophetic session help is coming hold on the Lord is showing me something help is coming I'm seeing help is coming that's what the Spirit of God is saying help is coming help is coming help is coming it will surprise you help is coming when God says help is coming it means people are coming men are coming men are coming I'm saying it again men are coming this is a word for somebody help is coming in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord is saying I should prophesy to someone it won't reach June it won't reach June this is what God is saying I don't even know what I'm saying listen God gave you a word God is saying you will not enter June without that miracle happening and in the name of Jesus Christ whoever that person is I release that word let there be a performance let there be a performance in the name of Jesus Christ let there be a performance I'm seeing I'm seeing a young man that came here you you are not based here you came from another city and there is the call of God upon your life but I'm seeing that not only is there a call of God upon your life I'm seeing that there is an anointing I'm not saying you should come out this is there are many people that belong don't worry the anointing will will find you there is an anointing I've not done the impartation yet but there is an anointing that is coming on that gentleman it may spill over to others but it's for one you will go back there is a revival within your territory that has been allocated to you your person in the name of Jesus let the anointing of the spirit find that person now You may look ordinary, said the Spirit of God, but when my grace comes upon you, I will do wonders through your life. The Lord is saying you may look ordinary, but when my grace comes upon you, you see the anointing of the Spirit is the maker of men. It is not about what they want to do. In the name of Jesus, whoever that gentleman is, I bring you into that grace. I bring you into that anointing. By the power of the Holy Spirit the Lord is giving somebody a kind of anointing here listen let me describe for you how it will work if you hold someone's hand and pray on an issue it is done that's how the anointing will work if at all you hold someone's hand except you don't hold the hand of the person and pray for that person whoever must carry this anointing I stretch my hands now by the Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ may that anointing be so lavish upon your life you will see strange testimonies as you agree with people they will note you they will note you for commanding results through prayer hallelujah let's pray for finances just allow me we'll round up I, I i i apologize already in advance i will do this very fast god is already visiting his people um there is a grace for finances i will continue to pray this until i see a manifestation of what i've seen in the spirit not only are there people here who are called just people men like um, ejimi that are called into the ministry of kingdom finance there are people who may not be called into that ministry but they are kingdom financiers because of that call and anointing upon their life the holy ghost will shift them in a certain way 
to grant them access you may look weak you may not have one naira in your pocket but listen i want you to believe me as i pray for you lord jesus where are these people that you are speaking to me about let the grace let the unction that makes for this kind of possibility let it be released upon them in the name of jesus christ let that grace be released upon them help him help him be sensitive gentleman please you would have injured him for nothing be sensitive huh in the name of jesus that grace i called him because the lord said i should minister to him that anointing is upon him i'm still praying there are people i'm seeing like coins being dropped on the hands of people in the spirit this is this is it like a token of that grace that call lord in the name of jesus christ i pray now everywhere in this congregation and outside if you are called into this ministry i declare skopa shalanda sakateko shalat you may not look like it but i release the grace on you may the lord align your understanding about finances may he align your understanding about business in a strange and supernatural way that will cause you to command strange abundance i declare that as a result of this prayer god will connect you to strategic individuals strategic individuals hallelujah there are people here who have please listen we're rounding up there are people here inside outside you have what we call the mantle of a savior you may not be the firstborn in your family but all the while a grace has been following you because you represent an altar i'm going to pray right now there are people whether you are young or old if that grace if you are the one that represents the altar of god in your family then it's time for that altar to begin to speak right now in the name of jesus the son of the living god for everyone here you represent the epicenter of the purposes of god in your family i stir up that altar i put fire upon that altar now let it begin to burn that from your secret place you begin to shift things in your family from your secret place you begin to command and manipulate realities from the realm of the spirit i make it so i declare it so in the name of jesus christ hallelujah hallelujah then i know there might be many people this may be the last personal case i'll deal with and then we'll pray there might be many people here with this case but there is a particular woman here you are barring you are a, there's a particular woman not that you are standing for someone you yourself please help them Madam, how long have you been married? 11 years. 11 years, no child. Madam, yes. how long? 7 years. 7 years. Yes. 18 years in total. You are standing here before the people of God because you believe that God can step in. You, madam? 18 years. You've Eight. been barren for how long? 18 years. 18 years. Yes. You? Yes. Madam, will you believe if I tell all three of you that according to the time of life, you will return with your children? No, 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 no. It's not amen. The question is, will you believe? Will you believe it? Madam, where are you coming from? I'm 
coming from Jushi. Where is that? Jushi at the back of NMS. Where are you coming from, madam? You are coming from Kaduna? Yes, sir. Who is this lady? Are you married? You've been barring too? Yes, sir. You too, madam. Please, if you are not married, don't come out here. If you are coming out for... If you are, if you, if someone you are standing for, just remain there. Please remain. If you are standing for someone, I will pray. But if it is for yourself, madam, you too. Look at me. You are trusting God. How long have you been married? I've been married for like five years, but I have a child. But I've been trying for like three years now. You have a child yes, already. Sir. You yes, just sir. want another one. Yes, sir. It's all right. I'll pray for you. These ones don't have any. The devil is a liar, madam. Don't be embarrassed. You are not standing before. There's nothing to be ashamed of. You too. You too. You are trusting God. How long have you been married? Yes. Two years. Yes. No. You, you had a child. You were even rejoicing. And you had a miscarriage. Yes. When? Last year. Last year. Yes. And from that time, this has affected you. Yes, I have to pray. There's something wrong with your stomach. Yes, the doctor already told you. I wouldn't say it in the open, but then this is what is killing the baby. Hold on, madam. Um, you had miscarriage. Not even in, tw in 2000 and in 2014. Child, uh, That's what I'm saying. You had a, they had to go and remove the baby. Yes. Because the baby died inside pieces, your stomach. Yes. The baby pieces like yes. this inside your stomach. Yes, sir. God is going to give you a child. Amen. My dear, look at me, this lady. The mercy of God needs to speak for you. you. You love Jesus? You love Jesus? I'll pray for you. But you are not in need of child. What you need is mercy. The mercy of God. Many of us don't know what the mercy of God is. The mercy of God is not for sinners. The mercy of God is his dimension that causes him to veto whatever limitation it is to come to help you. So when we say mercy, it's not just because you have to be a sinner. There are certain dimensions of God that are only revealed to you at the platform of his mercy. He said, thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. I want to pray and prophesy to all of you and agree with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Please go back and tell your various husbands that you were prayed for. I, I love men. I respect husbands. But many husbands don't love Jesus. They don't know Jesus. After their wives return like this and say, my husband, we just went for a program. They don't know what program. And they cancel out all of these things. It takes two to agree. Are we together? In the name of Jesus Christ, madam, put your hand in your stomach. I take away this demonic thing. Let it go now. In the name of Jesus, it disappears. Madam, I pray for you. The Lord opens your womb. In the name of Jesus, Madam, by the grace of God, you carry your child. In the name of Jesus Christ, I remove every growth from your stomach. In the name of Jesus, I declare that you return with your miracle. Madam, look at me. God is going to use you. Amen. You are not just going to give birth to a child. The hand of God is on your life. It doesn't look like it, but there is nothing in this life that will ever satisfy you except the service of God. You will love God and serve Him. And with this miracle God is going to give you, every other woman you pray for over the issue of the fruit of the womb, you will see that God will open up your soul. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, you will arise and have mercy upon this, my precious sister in the name of jesus the voice of accusation that speaks against you i silence it by the mystery of the blood now go and have your child it's over in the name of jesus christ it's over my dear look at me go and prepare you have a child now in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare by the power of the holy spirit let the grace of god speak for you madam i pray for you help her please it's over right now carry your child in jesus name please stretch your hands towards the altar and let's pray stretch your hands in one minute you for yourself madam okay in the name of jesus christ it's all right madam no problem in the name of jesus christ i pray um 
you are trusting God for a child in the name of Jesus Christ somebody's sister is going to have twins hold on hold on hold on the power of God will come on that person now as I'm speaking for the sake of your sister carrying twins this is twins the Lord himself there's one more person left I'm hearing the voice of children babies crying when it stops then I know that it's over I'm still hold on I'm still hearing it there is still one more person family I'm like I'm hearing the voice of children Lord in the name of Jesus wherever that family is I pray that you locate them right now by the Spirit of the Living God you locate them right now you locate them right now I'm still praying you locate them right now in the name of Jesus 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 stretch your hands and let's pray please begin to pray one minute and say father whatever I have dropped here just keep her there I'll pray for her that's all right begin to pray in the spirit and declare that whatever you have dropped here turns to your testimony in the name of Jesus I'm laying hands here and I'm agreeing with you impossible situations Unto you that answers prayers shall all flesh come. Please pray. Lord, turn around our captivities like the streams in the Negev. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, let them say among the hidden, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us whereof we are glad. We sow prayers in tears and we declare that we reap in joy. Lord, I bow my knees to you and I cry, visit your people. 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 Hallelujah. This prayer you see we pray here is a very deep spiritual mystery. It's not a ritual. It's a revelation. Sometimes when I travel and I go, the Lord instructs me to do the same thing there. And the amazing testimonies. This for me is one of the most thorough ways of ministering to people. Because this is a summation of the your truest desires because you wrote them by yourself is a representation of your pain and your expectations this is you standing before God through your request and I decree and declare as I stand and step upon this request I declare rise above every challenge in the name of Jesus Christ the same way I'm stepping on this in the name of Jesus that is how you are stepping on every situation I turn every request in this place into your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ hear me some of you it will be like you are dreaming the way you will see doors open in your life in the name of Jesus Christ every impossible situation represented here I cry to the God who is the God of this ministry that he will arise in power and surprise you for all those who have dropped their request online in the name of Jesus Christ the same grace that is visiting these requests is visiting their request in the name of Jesus by the anointing of the Holy Spirit let there be miracles in Jesus name please lift your hands everyone let me pray for you right now in the name of Jesus Christ listen you see 
every ministry let me tell you this it's an uncomfortable truth but it's true every ministry rises and stops at the spiritual level of lifting of the man of god wherever you stop spiritually as a man of god that's where the ministry rises it's impossible to lead a ministry that is higher than your own level of grace and anointing it doesn't work that way it can't work sustainably that means that when the man of god shifts in anointing and rises it means that everyone genuinely committed to that grace and that vision not based on your personal um your personal press but by the implication of connection you should also rise do, do we agree do you believe that yes i have seen the grace and the glory of god and the authority of the kingdom multiply and rise in my life this year like never before and i want to pray for you in the name of jesus right there where you are inside and outside and all those connected wherever you are spiritually i prophesy to you rise and i shift you to a new dimension i shift you to a new dimension you have worked in miracles before but in the name of Jesus, may your hand do wonders. You have taught the word accurately before. But in the name of Jesus, may your tongue from tonight become the pen of a ready writer. In the name of Jesus Christ. You have handled some level of finances before. But I shift you into figures that you have never seen before. In the name of Jesus Christ. You have experienced favor before but i stand here in the name of jesus and i declare a new order of favor you have had god before but i program your ears to hear deeper dimensions of the voice of god. i pray for everyone here inside and outside the mantle that causes men to be honorable may that grace come upon you May that grace come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, this ministry has never gone up and come down. Never, not once. It keeps going from glory to glory. I declare, let that be the definition of your life from today. Spiritually, financially, academically. For those who are students, I decree and declare. The grace for extraordinary excellence I release upon you. The grace for extraordinary excellence I release upon you. Anyone here trusting God for a job, a noble job, I stretch my hands. Between now and next miracle service, return with your testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. And anyone here due for promotion, I decree and declare by the finger of God step into a new dimension of promotion the fire that is upon your altar that is the secret of your life the secret of every man's glory is the fire that burns upon his altar when nothing is burning you will just be a talkative for nothing you will read and teach and nothing will happen i pray for you in the name of jesus the mystery that preserves fire upon the altars of men let it work for you let it work for you i found the calls of your prayer life i found the calls of your spiritual life i found the calls of your word life this is a prayer many people don't desire I pray for a baptism of spiritual hunger. I say it again, a baptism of spiritual hunger. That the Lord will expand your appetite for spiritual things. Every kind of arrival mentality, every kind of spiritual complacency, where there is no impact, there is no desire to press for the deeper things of God satisfied by the little results here and there 
I declare that the Lord plants a fresh hunger the hunger that can take you on a three days fast just to study the word and pray in the name of Jesus Christ some of us the grace to fast has died you fast by 10 you are yawning your life away and you can't pray I pray for you now in the name of Jesus the spirit of gluttony and uncontrolled lust for food I curse it from your life in the name of Jesus Christ and finally I pray for you in this strange season where God is lifting men and changing their stories as I'm praying for you I'm praying this one for myself too in the name of Jesus may you rise to a level where all those who knew you will turn and say this one is the finger of God in the name of Jesus Christ I'm calling on people who want to surrender their heart to Jesus now. Please, everyone stand. Please, everyone stand. No move. Let me tell you something. One of the assignments of the church is to harvest souls for the kingdom. We must be passionate and desperate and intentional about souls coming to Jesus. Are we together? There are people here who are saying apostle if you will lead me to jesus i'm not too proud i'm not a rebel i can come to him genuinely please listen carefully overflow three overflow two one by the roadside and those who are following online the church is gradually becoming very very unresponsive to the need for salvation you are a man of god here take the issue of the salvation of souls seriously if you are not saving souls as a church you are this in fact is sin it's not just wrong it's not just disobedience it's sin it is important that we continue to partner with the spirit that people come to jesus it's not just a ritual to show we are spiritual it is the only way that their lives can be salvaged first eternally and then to live a life of victory here are we together there are people here you may have been born from a christian background a number of you love jesus christ but you are saying man of god i have never truly made a commitment for jesus i have i've seen people do all this but tonight i want to make that decision some of you are saying man of god i love jesus but i need a renewal in my life i just need a fresh touch i know that my life is not the way it used to be and i want to straighten out my ways with god if you are here and you belong to these two categories aside from overflow three i'll just request for time's sake that you move forward to the front of your projector screen overflow one overflow two the roadside and inside here i want you to come out right where i am here wherever you are god bless you quickly please we have one minute for this wherever you are jesus is speaking to you you must be born again no one will force you but you have to win this war tonight you have to win this war tonight god bless you quickly come boldly come like one who is coming to receive an award don't come as if you are attending a funeral this is a miracle of miracles god bless you apostle what if people know me and they see me leave all those people this is the business of you and god make your way to the front quickly those coming from outside please let's clear the way for them so that they hurry up let's clear the way for them god bless you god bless you as you come quickly god bless you as you come you need jesus please don't come out here to pretend come out genuinely from your heart you must be born again every single one of us had to pass through that process jesus said i am the door not a door the door the door the only door every other route is a, is, is is not correct you have to follow through the door hallelujah thank you so much ladies and gentlemen for coming out to make this declaration i want you to know that this is a very noble declaration lift your right hand after me and say this passionately and truthfully say lord jesus if you're joining them please come quickly join them say lord jesus i love you say it again i love you with all my heart i believe that you are the son of god 
that you died for me you shed your blood for my sin tonight i receive you i receive your life i as i receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and i declare that i reign in life in the name of jesus i move forward ever and backward never the grace to stay the grace to grow the grace to be useful is mine tonight in jesus name lord jesus i stretch my hands towards these precious people they have come before your people making declarations making commitments to live for you to love you to serve you i pray that the grace that makes this a possibility let it be released upon their lives in the name of jesus i declare your sins forgiven i declare that the power of sin the power of satan is broken over your life you go from glory to glory in the name of jesus christ amen and amen i appreciate you i want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands all of you just follow him in concert there will be a group of people to just talk to you address you very quickly and then you will be back to your seat let's appreciate the lord for tonight hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you